Oklahoma a national title contender mark and with them it all starts with a suffocating defense. Well, it definitely does and if you have to look the way Bob Stoops recruits his defensive players he recruits athletes first he wants speed he wants players to get to the ball and that's what you're going to see is a swarming speed physical defense out of the Oklahoma Sooners. And right here, take a look at this. Chris Sims at the quarterback position. Over the top goes Roy Williams. And that virtually knocked Chris Sims out of the Heisman Trophy <laughs> candidacy. But we won't go into that. But here's some of the speed of the defense you're seeing by the Oklahoma Sooners. They just gobble up opponents. And it's total team speed. Right. Everyone breaks to the ball. And I think that's key, Trev. You know how, how their coach, that you've got to get to the ball. He wants 11 hats to the ball. And they want to make sure that they can knock the ball out, create turnovers. Yeah, speed on defense is obviously key. And I think everybody knows that their defense is fantastic. But I think Oklahoma, if they're going to be a team that's going to compete for the national championship, which I think they will. I think they get to the Fiesta Bowl. I think here's a team offensively that must do better. I mean, Jason White at quarterback, I think, gives them some athleticism. But I think the most important thing is Quentin Griffith at running back. Kevin Wilson comes from Northwestern. He's now their running game coordinator. Talked to Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator. He said, Trev, look, you're going to be surprised when you see this offense. Our offensive line is going to play better. Jason White does better. We're going to be able to run the football. I think this can now be a complete team. Last year, this was a great defensive team and a very average offensive team. Now I think they're complete in all areas. You know what's so interesting about that statement that you re related back to the offense and the offensive line in the running game? And I think that's probably the second time I've heard that come out of your mouth since we've been doing these shows. Trev's a complete player. Yeah, he come goes, on. He now. goes all the way around. Yeah, both you you got to do it all. You got to do it all, Mark. You, you can't just be all. one dimensional. You're absolutely correct. Exactly. All right. We all agree on something. Let's move on to uh, one of the more intriguing games of this uh, upcoming weekend. For a long, long time. Let's go get after it. <laughs> It's not just the toughest ticket in town, it's the toughest ticket in the entire state. The University of Tulsa has a golden opportunity on their home field. They'll face the nation's third ranked team. That's if there is a home field advantage when you take on the Sooners in the state of Oklahoma. And we are getting ready for a little Friday night football. Oklahoma and Tulsa will get you back out to Steve Levy and Rod Gilmore in just a little bit. Reese Davis here in the studio with Mark May and Trev Alberts. And guys, throughout the preseason, so much talk about this Oklahoma defense yes. and how devastating it can be. But no defense in college football ever has lost two national award winners as Oklahoma has from Roy Williams and Rocky Kalmus. Will it make a difference, Mark? I think it will, but you rarely repl replace those great players, Reese. But the key is Jimmy Wilkerson, a defensive end, he is a type of player that's going to put so much pressure on the offense. Oklahoma still has impact players on their defense, but they have so much tremendous team speed. That's going to be the key in this game. Watch how Oklahoma converges around the Tulsa offense. You know, I think we all know about Oklahoma's defense. They're fantastic. They have a lot of speed. But the reality is this about this football team. If Oklahoma is going to make it to the Fiesta Bowl, which I think they will, the question is offensively. I think Quentin Griffin at running back needs to get going. Last year at the end of the season, I mean, Oklahoma's offense was close to horrible. I mean, they could not score touchdowns. Now Jason White at quarterback, more mobile. They must be much more productive offensively if this team's going to. I mean, great defense, but offensively, I want to see some production to see if this team is a national championship caliber team. They want to get that passing game a little more vertical and get some help right. for Griffin who carried the ball nearly 77 percent of the time when Oklahoma ran it a year ago. Another staple of our Friday night coverage here is going to be our high school showcase game of the week. Friday night traditionally a night for high school football. We want to share the spotlight with some of the top teams and top players across the country and we're going to start off in western Pennsylvania tonight. We're going to be keeping an eye on Woodland Hills from Pittsburgh taking on Shaler area. We'll be keeping an eye on that game providing you with updates and cut ins. Woodland Hills number 12 in America in the USA Today poll. Right now we are getting ready to see if the Sooners can boom against the golden hurricane of Tulsa back out to Skelly Stadium after this. Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a capacity crowd of better than 40,000 will be on hand as the third ranked Oklahoma Sooners have come to town to take on the Golden Hurricane. 
Hi, everybody, and good evening. I'm Steve Levy. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to something that is both new and exciting at ESPN. It is Friday night college football. Now, no longer do you have to wait until the end of the game on Thursday night, all the way to kickoff early Saturday afternoon. Pleased to be joined every Friday night by my partner, Rod Gilmore, and we start with a big bang here with Oklahoma. They come in without Roy Williams and Rocky Kalmas, and the scary part about it, they might actually be better. Well, you can be better when you can go out and get yourself a couple of junior college all-American linebackers who can run like the wind like the rest of your defense. They have a swagger, but the question is, will they have a swagger on offense? They have a new offensive coordinator, they have an inexperienced quarterback, but they got new formations. But they need the confidence and the swagger that their defense has if this team is going to make a run at a national championship. What does that say about a program? They go 11 and 2 and make changes. Yeah, they make changes, and Bob Stoops said we can make them because we keep getting better and better with talent. They're bringing in great freshmen with a lot of speed. He thinks this could be his best defense and his most productive offense in quite some time. We are set for the premier edition of Friday Night Football. Oklahoma won the toss, and they've deferred. Trey DiCarlo will kick it away for the Sooners. Jerome Janay is back deep for Tulsa. He'll take it at the five. Across the 25 to the 27-yard line. And Tulsa will take over on offense. They're led by their young quarterback, Tyler Gooch, who some 12 hours ago was in his human anatomy and psychology class. You wonder how much you could have been concentrating about that class, thinking about taking on the number three team in the nation and quite possibly the best defense we've seen in college football in some time. Tulsa will open up, first down and 10 from their own 28-yard line. Gooch has a couple of backs behind him, Eric Richardson and Mark Halata. Halata is the fullback. Send the man in motion to the top of your screen, and they'll pitch to Richardson. He'll try the left side, turns the corner, the 40, cuts it inside. He'll cut back again, and he's into Oklahoma territory. Finally dropped to the 39-yard line by Andre Wolfolk. A 33-yard gain to start for Tulsa. Richardson, the most talented of the running backs for Oklahoma. And they get the big gain there. Rather, for Tulsa, a lot of the fullback had the big block, made him turn, able to turn the corner. So first down and 10 from just across the 40. Could not have started any better for Tulsa, Rod. Little play action for Gooch. Reverse it to Jermaine Landrum. And Landrum on the end around. He's forced out at the 32-yard line. Teddy Lehman made the stop. Gain of seven. Richardson and Halata are fullbacks. Caleb Blankenship is the tight end. Bryant and Colton, the wide receivers. And the offensive line for Tulsa. Anthony Taylor just recently added to the Remington list uh, among the nation's top setters. One of 32 players. Second down and short. Got it like this. Single setback is Richardson. He'll try the left side again. And on second and short, maybe gets a yard. The defensive line for Oklahoma. Tommy Harris is the cover boy, the player everybody's talking about. Yeah, don't forget Corey Klein. He's the big-time player inside, though. And the linebackers, both Lance Mitchell and Pasha Jackson are both JUCO transfers. And the secondary for Oklahoma. Wolfolk made that first stop. He's the big player there. And there is Tommy Harris. We'll watch for him all game. This is third down and three. Five seconds left to get the snap off, and they do. Gooch with good pass protection. He'll step up and slide down. And looks like he has the first down. Lehman brought him down. Something they've been practicing. Yeah, he's a baseball player. He takes a lot of hits, and they want him to slide more. He's going to do that. But what happened to the Oklahoma defense early on? Well, you spend a couple of weeks, Steve, beating up on your own guys. You come out, you're revved up, you fly around the field. Tulsa anticipated that and used a little bit of misdirection to take that to their advantage. Real nice job of making Oklahoma speed work against them. Looks like they're very close to do the measurement. 
Our referee is Steve Usacek. The umpire, John Massarello. Back judge is Homer Jackson. Side judge, Mike Bailey. The linesman, Don Capral. Field judge, Phil Laurie. And Mike Moeller, the line judge as well. They do have the first down. And you can tell by the crowd reaction, there was some talk here. Would it be 50-50, 70-30 Oklahoma? The Tulsa fans making noise early. Yeah, I think the Oklahoma fans are a little bit stunned that their vaunted defense has allowed a team that was 1-10 last season that struggled offensively to simply come down the field on their very first drive. But frankly, I'm stunned. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people are. 33-yard gain to open it up. Now they do have the first down. First and 10 inside the 30-yard line. Hand off to Richardson. He's brought down by Lehman. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Bring up a second down and long, something they want to avoid. Hey, Steve, what's happening? Watch inside now. You see the lineman going down, cut blocking. It's hard to make a tackle when you're on the ground. Oklahoma guys are getting ripped to shreds right now on this opening drive. Nice plan by Keith Burns and his offensive coordinator to come up with this. Hey, let's chop these guys, and they're cutting them down. Keep your eyes on that. Second down and 10. Again, good pass protection. Set up the short pass to Richardson out of the backfield. He's brought down after the gain of three. Stopped by Lance Mitchell, the junior from Los Banos, California. Now, all this cut blocking is going to re, re, uh, re, uh, relate to having something happen that you might not want to have happen. If you're Oklahoma and you've been practicing all week, you don't get cut in practice. You come out in the first game, somebody's going low on you, you start getting ticked off about that. You're not expecting that. So expect Bob Stoops, Mike Stoops, and those guys to come back. Hey, time to bring the blitz. They want to cut. They want to play that way. We'll go after them. This is third down and seven now. Here's Gooch with time, steps up, throws. Looked like he had two receivers, went through the hands of Eric Richardson, and then Blankenship the tight end. Yeah, Gooch, Gooch is pretty pumped up. Yeah, that, that ball right there, all he has to do is just kind of toss it, dump it over the middle. But he's pumped up, he sees he's got a guy, and he gives it too much right there. All he had to do was just lightly let it go, and he had a nice pickup. Uh, fourth down and seven from the 26-yard line. And this will be a field goal attempt of 43 yards. And the field goal is up, and it is no good. Ricky Talent misses from 43. And it remains scoreless. A very good start. Would have been capped off nicely by the field goal there. Yeah, a good start, but very unfortunate that you don't get the field goal. That's a downer for Tulsa. They needed to come away with something out of that. Two mistakes. They missed on the third down pass, where they could have picked up the first down. And then missing that kick from that hash mark hurts them. Oklahoma now dodges the bullet. OK, all right, we weren't ready. We'll settle down and come out and play. Here is Jason White. He'll make just his third college start here tonight at Tulsa on first down and 10. White's on the move, rolling to his left. Takes his first hit, knocked out at the four-yard line by Keithan McCory. And the backs and receivers for Oklahoma to go to. Will Peoples starts at wide receiver in place of Mark Clayton, who's banged up with a knee. We do expect to see Clayton. And this is where they talk about the change in the Oklahoma philosophy. The offensive line, maybe a bit too finesse last year. Had a bit of a snarl to him this season. And that remains to be seen. Second down and five. Little misdirection. Quentin Griffin. And flags fly. Looks like a face mask will be the call. You think? <laughs> I think Quentin Griffin got turned around there. And I think everybody in the stadium saw that face mask. I think mean, he almost lost his helmet on that one. Now, I can understand how a guy has trouble tackling Quentin Griffin because he is a tough, small guy. And that was flagrant. It's going to be a 15-yarder. Mention the officials' names. They are from the Big 12. Sam Rayburn is the best defensive player for Tulsa. He is the man in the middle there on that defensive line. And the linebackers, Bailey, Dupree, and Reese. Michael Delaney could play today. He is injured, but he is dressed. He's a former transfer from Oklahoma, and the rest of the 
Tulsa secondary Darrell Wimberly who could see on offense he is listed as their third string wide receiver so after the penalty and the yardage is marched off Oklahoma moves up to the 46 and they'll keep it on the ground pick up a four on the play for Quentin Griffin McCory brought him down Oklahoma is like a guy on New Year's Day who makes resolutions okay I'm gonna get to the gym more I'm gonna eat right all that stuff that's good for me Oklahoma said we got to run the football better you know we need to do that we got to throw it deep but what happens when you get a month later into the season you fall back to your old habits you throw the ball short passes Oklahoma right now is trying to be committed to the running game now they're gonna have to throw it deep pretty soon here they were 89th in the country in rushing Again, yeah, they went 11 and 2 and they were 89th in rushing little delayed inside handoff to Griffin and he's got enough for the first down Darrell Wimberly brought him down third member of our broadcast team each and every Friday night say hi to Alex Flanagan Hey, Steve. Well, as you guys have mentioned, all eyes tonight are on OU quarterback Jason White. Now, everyone wants to see how he is going to adjust to the starting quarterback position and how his knee is going to hold up. That's the same knee that he injured last season and kept him out for most of the season. He says he's ready, but keep in mind he has not taken a hit. Notice that he is wearing a knee brace tonight. Now, I talked to the trainer, and he said that is just a precautionary measure, and he said he is ready to go. He wants to get hit. Steve, back to you. White put it up for grabs there. Curtis Fagan, the intended target, and Jermaine Hope was right with him. That could have gone either way. That could have been a touchdown catch, or that could have been intercepted. Well, that was a nice play, you know, by Hope to get up there and bat that ball down. It was essentially a jump ball. And you go back to White. You heard Alex talk about him. You know, the knee is an issue. But the other issue, Steve, is experience. This guy has only started two games. He hasn't played a full season since high school. So can he handle three, four weeks of consecutive taking snaps back there? Second down and 10 out of the shotgun. Quick screen out to Antoine Savage. Makes a move, picks a hole, maybe gets two yards on the play. Sammy Umabong made the stop. Back to White. He, of course, came through a, a tough, tough preseason quarterback battle with Nate Hibble, who was a quarterback for, who started a quarterback for all 11 wins a season ago. But they figure White, I think, gives them a better upside. Well, he's more athletic. I mean, he's more of a threat. Nate Hibble doesn't get the ball down the field and doesn't scramble as well. This is a third down and eight, right out of the shotgun now. Number 39 at Tulsa. Good pass protection. Sets up and throws across the middle, and it is dropped. A little behind Savage, the intended target, but he was there, had it, and could not hang on. You know, that ball got tipped, but I think he made a bad decision. I think the guy he should have gone to was his tight end here who's coming across. Watch how wide open he's going to be. He's going to miss him. He's wide open now, clearing out, but he goes back to the middle, gets the ball behind him a bit, didn't get it there. I like Smith in that situation crossing. I would have gone to him. Blake Ferguson is on to punt it away for Oklahoma. It's about the only similarity between these two schools, other than they're both in the state of Oklahoma, both are replacing they're starting punter and kicker. We'll watch for that tonight. And it rolls into the end zone for the touchback. 9.07 to play. It's Friday night football in Tulsa. Each team has had a possession. We're scoreless. Scoreless early on, Oklahoma and Tulsa, which makes you think back to last year's game. Now, Keep in mind these two teams met in Norman and the final was 58 to nothing, but it was a 3-0 game after the first quarter. Midway through the second quarter, Nebraska only had, Oklahoma only had a 6-0 lead. DJ Barnett is now in a tailback, replacing Eric Richardson on first down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Handoff. Not much happening there. Never made it back to the line of scrimmage. Jonathan Jackson snuffed out the play. But Jonathan Jackson doesn't get a lot of attention because there's a pretty good defense then on the other side and Jimmy Wilkerson. But these linebackers and defensive linemen are really good all the way around. Watch the good point of attack play. You know, pushing the thing back inside and all the white shirts around. But the guy that I think is a real key for them is number 10, Lance Mitchell. New linebacker for them. Three wide receivers in for Tulsa on second down and 12. Tyler Gooch hands off to Barnett. 
And again, does not get back to the original line of scrimmage. Jimmy Wilkerson came over from the left end position to make the stop. So what, what happened? Well, what, what's going on down here is that they're sort of backed up inside their own 20-yard line. You don't see the sweeps. You don't see the misdirection because they're playing field position right now, Tulsa is. They don't want a bad mistake. They don't want Harris or somebody to come knocking in and push him back and then give a short field to the Oklahoma offense. So they're being conservative right now. So they're running on third and 12, uh, or not that conservative? Screen pass or something like that. Third down and 12. Let's see what Gooch has in mind. Has a single setback, that's Barnett. Looks like a straight drop. Sees some running room, throws, and nearly intercepted by Derek Strait. Went right through Strait's hands. He has five interceptions to lead all active Sooners, but couldn't come up with that one exactly what you were talking about. Well, you see, that's why you want to be conservative. Screen pass would have been good here. Strait does a nice job coming off of his man to make this play in zone coverage. Now, I got to tell you, when you have two corners like they have at Oklahoma in Strait and Wolfolk, you got a chance to be a great, great defense. Court Moffin is back at the three-yard line. Well, there is some confusion on the field. So they got the timeout. Maybe before a penalty would have been called. Well, good idea. Tulsa takes the timeout instead of being pushed back further to their goal line. We'll come back with the punt about the three yard line right after this. Back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Court Moffitt is standing at his own three yard line. The transfer from New Mexico. Anthony Perkins is back deep for Oklahoma at his own 42-yard line. Moffitt will get it away. Perkins running up to the 42. Cuts to the middle of the field. Finds a seam. Missed tackle. Brace to the outside. To the 20. There is a flag down. He's in the end zone, Perkins is, but there is a flag down back at the 50-yard line, and the Tulsa coaches are all waving, bring it back, bring it back. Yeah, it's, it's coming back, and I think it was a block in the back, and I don't think it was necessary from what I saw. But uh, Perkins is back as the return man to perk up the special teams, and he's got 4-3-2 speed. Fastest guy on Oklahoma's team. Really interesting to hear the mixture of the crowd here. <laughs> Tough to tell who's the home game. Illegal block in the back on a receiving team. Ten yard penalty in the spot of the foul. First Wipes out a 58-yard return by Perkins. Yeah, let's see if we can find that block in the back. There's one right there. It looked like, looked like it was number five, Brandon Shelby. And I don't think he really had to do it. Take a look. There he is right there. He's getting by. He was getting by that man. He didn't have to make that, make that block. There was going to be a missed tackle. Terrell Siegfried, I think, was going to miss him. And so instead of kicking off with a seven-point lead, Oklahoma takes over on first down and ten. A pretty good gain across midfield. Quentin Griffin for Oklahoma. We're starting to see some shoddy tackling by Tulsa. Game of, gain of 17. Yeah, a little shoddy tackling, but some pretty good blocking as well. You know, Oklahoma is changing up their run game a little bit. Look at this. Hey, they got a fullback. They got a fullback back there. That's not Oklahoma football. They're a one-back team. Now they've got two backs. There you see Smith, the tight end in the backfield, coming up, giving a nice block. On second down, Griffin again on the draw. That time maybe gets a yard on the play. Bring up a second down and long. Under seven to go here in the first. Josh Dupree the stop. Yeah, Quentin Griffin just killed these guys last, last season. Three rushing touchdowns. Had a touchdown receiving. And Trent Smith also worked some magic on them as well. He, he was just a handful for them. But then everybody played pretty well in a 58 to nothing win. <laughs> Griffin is playing in his team high 31st consecutive game. He's got four carries, 31 yards so far on second down and nine. Handoff up the middle. It's Griffin again. All sorts of daylight 
Reginald Reese finally brought him down. And we're set for an update. You ever heard of this guy, Reese Davis? Who? <laughs> All right, all right, guys. Our high school showcase game of the week. It's a Friday night feature, and here comes the number 12 team in all the land. Woodland Hills out of Pittsburgh taking on Shaler area. This is big. Mark Yezovich, all 232 pounds of him in Woodland Hills. Up 12. Nothing. Unfortunately, Risa lost the custody battle over you, and I won. <laughs> and you're with me on Friday nights, brother. On first down and 10, just over six minutes to play. Off the play action, White buying himself some time and now throwing it away. Now, you know, he can throw that ball away. He didn't have to try and throw it downfield. And White probably just uh, lost his composure a little bit there, but you can throw the ball away now when you're outside that tackle box. And all he had to do was toss it to the sideline. Hey, look, uh, there were baseball scores on on the bottom line. Congratulations to the owners and the players for figuring that out. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. And how about that Oklahoma offense last year that really struggled rushing the ball? Zero rushing yards in that game against Oklahoma State. Really hurt their season. Griffin, the run, comes up way short. Jorma Bailey to stop. And here's the problem. The problem is for Oklahoma, when you can't get the ball down the field deep, Nobody's going to give you that respect. Now you see that Tulsa is starting to just cram the line of scrimmage. They're not playing man-to-man. -man. They're playing a lot of zone back there, but they're getting seven, eight guys up front to deal with the running game now. Third and ten upcoming from the 27-yard line of Tulsa. Out of the shotgun. He's got three receivers to his left. And here is Jason White under some pressure rolling to his right. Takes a look and throws, and it is flat-out drop. Would have been enough for the first down. Will Peoples might have been a bit low, but he had it in his hands and couldn't come up with it. Well, you got to make that catch. You know, and they're missing right now Curtis Fagan, who has had a bad knee and didn't start tonight. Peoples started in his place. And this ball, although it's thrown hard and low, this is a catch the Oklahoma receivers normally make. Watch this thing right here. Sets up a field goal attempt. This will be a 44-yard field goal attempt for Trey DiCarlo. Fresh from the Naval Academy, left after two weeks of boot camp. Finds himself as the kicker. And it is up, and it is good. Five minutes, seven seconds to play here in the first quarter. And Tulsa's hanging around. Oklahoma, third-ranked team in the nation. They lead 3-0. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football brought to you by Adidas. Adidas and Foot Locker introduce the newest addition to the sport luxury collection, SL Hoops. And by Sam Adams, mighty tasty. Alongside Rod Gilmore and Alex Flanagan, Steve Levy, your Friday night football telecasters. Each and every Friday night throughout the college football season, bringing you great action across the country. Oklahoma, the 3-0 lead on the DiCarlo field goal. And Trey will kick it away. That makes now two Trey's I can think of. DiCarlo and Wingo. Jerome Janae is back deep from the six for Tulsa. He's out across the 20. And just shy of the 25-yard line. Down to Alex. Hey, Steve, head coach Keith Burns comes into tonight's game with a lot to prove. You may remember last season he promised a bowl appearance and then went on to finish 1-10. in 10. So he needs to show tonight that his team is vastly different from last year's, and he's counting on Tyler Gooch, the 19-year-old quarterback, to help him prove that. We got a chance to see both of them off the field and kind of see how they interact, and they seem to be very fond of one another. Burns calls Gooch a magical kid, and I'm sure he will be looking for him to create some magic here tonight. Well, he's got the magic. He's just a little bit pumped up right now. This is a big game for him. You know, he's from Tulsa. It's a big place for the high schools around here. And he is so psyched. Yesterday, you could see it in his eyes, Steve. He was raring to go. Didn't want to go to classes today, but had to do it anyway. At six foot 190, I thought he was an SID assistant when he walked in the room. He is the heart and soul of this offense. Hey, he, he's not a buck 90. That's what they officially list him. Yeah. Come on, come on. You're not we, buying that, huh? We were up close and personal. Flag on the play. We'll get the call. Delay of game. 
is the call. We'll push him back five yards. Alex mentioned one in ten last year. Burns had a great line for that. He said, you know, God put our eyes up front to look ahead. And that's that's a great point. Tulsa can can take this as a positive. The the last time they had a one-win season was 1969. They bounced back to go six and four the following season. They would take that this season. After the flag, first down at 15. Here's Gooch, steps up. He's tripped up now and dropped at the 18-yard line. Looked like he might have tripped over his own right tackle, Tony Kadick, the junior from Freeport, Pennsylvania. Are we going to get a blitz here inside? Those two guys coming, you'll see Teddy Lehman and Lance Mitchell. That's classic Oklahoma defense. They like to bring those linebackers inside at you, blitzing them, and then let the secondary sit back and let you make a mistake. So the penalty, then he's tripped up. Second down at 18. Send the man in motion, top of the screen. Fakes the inside handoff, rolling to his right and throwing. And it's behind Garrett Mills, the true freshman tight end. Hey, Steve, bad timing down here, you know? I mean, you gotta be careful right now. Remember the last time they had the third down? Gooch almost threw the pick, straight dropped it. Third and 18, we're talking about a... Here's a draw right yeah, here, draw, right? draw, screenplay, something like that. Otherwise, it's right. going to be 10 to nothing. And if it's 10 to nothing against this defense, Burns is going to be telling his guys, hey, hang in there, but yeah, it's an uphill climb. Understanding there's no such thing as a moral victory in college football, Tulsa gets out of the first quarter trailing only 3 nothing. to take that. They sign on for that. Third down at 18, what are you going to do? Gooch will drop back to pass. Under some pressure, gets a block and throws and completes. Sean Yoder makes the catch and he somehow managed to stay in bounds. Talk about your riverboat gamblers here. I mean, they're taking on the nation's top defense and not blinking. I mean, right here, Gooch just says, what the heck? It's third and 18. I'm in the shadow of my own goalpost. I'm going to let it fly. And Oklahoma sitting back there in his own defense, waiting for the play. But Derek Strait came up too too much that time. Gave enough room in there for that ball to get in there. 22-yard game. Dan Lounsbury, the offensive coordinator for Tulsa, said, "Hey, we are going to go after him. Everyone has tried the same thing against him and haven't been successful. We're going to give this a shot." Gooch under pressure. Dusty Dvorak brought him down, probably at the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be one of the stories of the night. Gooch is going to be under pressure, probably every single snap he drops back on. Well, and Oklahoma will keep rotating their defensive line to bring that pressure. You know, the Dan Cody is in there now at the outside end for Wilkerson. And they keep changing guys up. Tommy Harris is out right now. Their second team is pretty aggressive, pretty fast. They'll keep bringing guys in. Second down and nine. Three and a half to go here in the first quarter from Tulsa. Option Gooch will keep it. Drop for a loss. Teddy Lehman put a pretty good stick on him. <laughs> you know, Teddy Lehman got moved from, you know, the Mike linebacker, which is strong side, to the weak side linebacker, the Will guy, where he will be freer to run around and use his speed and get big hits. Heck, he might get as many big hits as Nelly has, you know? <laughs> it's your education, pal. You're working with me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Lehman, I guess, added a lot of weight in the offseason. And yet has maintained his speed. That's got to be a positive. It's a great deal for Most him. Most people put on weight, slow down. Uh, yeah, these guys lift the weights. On Run third the hill. down and ten. Inside handoff to Richardson. Dvorak brought him down. And now they'll have to punt it away. But in much better field position. Okay, but I don't get that one. You got third and 18 inside your own 20-yard line. And you let it air. You're at your 40-yard line. You know, take a shot there. You got less risk of a problem around midfield than you do at your own 20-yard line. I was getting used to the aggressive play. Court Moffitt is set back. Well, maybe that's part of it is changing up. Well, it's field position right now. I mean, they, they figured right now they can pin them in a little bit. And maybe, you know, when they hit on the third down play, Oklahoma was expecting to go conservative. Perkins is back deep. And he's going back even deeper. He'll take it to 11 after the good punt by Moffitt. Makes a couple of little stays on his feet. And he's brought down at the 24-yard line. A 50-yard punt by Moffitt. 
Some people are wondering why you'd have the home and home deal. Last year they played in Norman, this year here in Tulsa. I mean, there really is a big upside for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane in this game. It really is. I mean, this is important for them from recruiting standpoint, from the exposure and all that. Their program is a pretty good one. We've been here several days, seen their facilities. A lot of good things happening for Keith Burns. If he can get a major win along the way, be it tonight or somewhere else, these guys will get the winning, confident attitude that they need. First down and 10 now from the 25-yard line for Oklahoma. Here's Jason White. Quick drop and a throw and completes to Trent Smith. No surprise, Smith led all tight ends in the nation last year with 61 catches. That's a gain of 11. Well, he is the best tight end in college football now. I mean, last year he was right up there with Jeremy Shockley and, and uh, Graham from Colorado, but now he is the guy in college football. He's fast enough to play as a wide receiver. They split him out an awful lot, and he uses that big body to shield off the defensive backs like he did on that last play. First down and 10. Hand it off to Griffin. Finds plenty of running room. The 41 man a beat cuts it inside. It's a foot race, and he is brought down. Keith and McCory was the last man. Great diving effort. Never gave up McCory. And able to bring him down after the gain of 49 for Quentin Griffin. Uh, this offensive line is a lot better than it was before. He's going to come on in here a little delay. You'll see him go through there. But he has great vision. Watch him see it here. He feels it back. Cuts back on that zone inside run play. And now it's just pure speed and vision. Now, he doesn't have breakaway speed, but he has great vision. The cutback, he saw the lane, and then he used his arm, switching the ball to get back into the middle of the field. Nice effort out of Q. Seven carries, 96 yards. Pass is completed. It's Trent Smith again inside the 10. Wait a second, did he lose the football? Tulsa says they have it. First turnover of the game belongs to the Golden Hurricane, Brendan Swisher, able to come up with the loose football. Now, let me ask you a question here. We know that during camp, Oklahoma worked on Alabama, and they worked on Texas. Do you think maybe their players were not as focused for this one as Tulsa's players have been? Absolutely. I mean, all it takes is a missed field goal, a turnover, and all of a sudden you're in a ball game. And Oklahoma's in a ball game right now. I thought that 33-yard gain on the first play from scrimmage by Tulsa should have been a wake-up call for Oklahoma. But Golden Hurricane are hanging around. Down three, minute to play, first quarter, and they've got the football. Yorel Parrish checks into the football game for Tulsa. He's behind Gooch, and they'll pitch it to him. Right side, maybe a yard on the play. Tommy Harris able to make the stop. Swisher, the player who came up with that loose football. You know, Burns is not only the head coach, he's a defensive coordinator. And he was a really, really good coordinator before he became a head coach. And he's back coordinating, taking control of this defense, saying, I got to get it going my way with my style. 41-year-old, native of First Texas. Had a big five-win season two years ago in his first year, but again, they dropped down to just a one-win team last year. Second down and nine. Richardson is back in. And here's Gooch. Rowan to his right, throwing on the run. Receiver comes back to help him out and makes the play. It's Robbie Bryant, his first catch of the football game. And that'll move the sticks. So we haven't heard much from Tommy Harris, the All-American. He's right here. He's going to get doubled, and they're going to sprint his way. But you always want to have a couple of guys on him. Right there, Harris drawing a couple of guys, slips on the turf, but he doesn't get a chance to make a play because they stifle him with two blockers and then get around him to the outside. Good concentration by Bryant taking the pass up off his shoulder pad there. And that will do it. Just like a season ago in Norman, after one quarter, Oklahoma has a 3-0 lead over Tulsa. Will the final result be 58 to nothing? We'll have to stick around. Second quarter on the way. Steve Levy, Rod Gilmore, Alex Flanagan. Friday night football from Tulsa and Bob Stoops finds Sim and his guys in a football game. Look at the time of possession. That's not what he had drawn up coming into this ball game. He wanted to get his running attack going and control the game, and he hasn't been able to do that. Tulsa 
trailing by three. They have the football to open up quarter number two. On right, first down and ten from the 26, Urell Parrish, true freshman running back in the game, and he's got the ball. Looks like he bumped into one of his own offensive linemen. Maybe gets a half a yard on the play. Game day's on the road. First up for Chris Kirk and coach tomorrow, the big house Ann Arbor, Michigan. Then 10th-ranked Michigan will host Washington in that game. Each week, 90 minutes. They preview all the day's games from the site of one of the biggest matches. More on our upcoming games. Log on to ESPN.com, the keyword schedule. We got to catch that in the morning. On our way out of town? Yep, yep. No, not until we watch it, then. I should be up by 10.30 Eastern time. Second down and nine. Single setback remains Parrish. Bit of a delay, and they hand it off to him, trying the left side. And he is brought down for a loss of four. Jimmy Wilkerson would not be denied. Well, Wilkerson shows you the speed and the pursuit ability that Oklahoma has. If you're going to beat Oklahoma, if you're going to move the ball, you got to block their strong safety. That was Roy Williams last year. You know, now it's Eric Bassey, number 13. And Wilkerson is a guy who helps everyone out. He's a guy who's a big, strong, fast guy, 252 pounds now. And he's a key to that defense. But I really think that if you're going to do something, you got to block the strong safety. You got to find a way to get to him. Last season, Wilkerson led the team 18 tackles for losses like that last one, going with five sacks on third and 15. There's the conservative play call. Dan Cody wasn't buying it, and Parrish is brought down. And Tulsa will go back and punt. Well, it's your field position game right now. Time of possession. Tulsa trying to make sure they just dig out of this hole. And they're feeling pretty good about their defense right now. They're feeling like they can hold off these guys a little bit. They're not afraid of Oklahoma's offense. Oklahoma's got to take a shot. They got to throw the ball down the field. They got to get something going to put a little fear in Tulsa. Court Moffitt back at his two. His last punt was from his own three, the other side of the field, and he boomed a 50 yarder. Antonio Perkins, remember, had the punt return touchdown called back on the illegal block. And Perkins. Like a running start right out of the 50. Steps up, 45. Now going the wrong way. Now in big trouble. And he's pushed all the way back to their side of the field by Jerome Janae. Well, Perkins hasn't returned punts since high school. He's got a 4.32 speed. He's great. Goes to a 33-yard punt return. Punt, just a one-yard return that time. Oklahoma and Tulsa, 3-0. Back in Tulsa, the Golden Hurricane. They only have a handful of alum who played in the NFL, including Dennis Bird. Can it be done? Can the University of Tulsa, can this group of men sitting right here, right now, beat that football team, the University of Oklahoma? You bet you can. You bet you can. That is one inspiring speech from Dennis Burton. If you don't know his story, you will. White looking for Mark Clayton. It's knocked away, and Alex has more. Well, Dennis, so many of us recall your injury when you were playing with the New York Jets and are so happy to see you here standing and doing so well. Bring us up to speed on how you are doing. Well, thank you, first of all. I'm doing very well. I'm coming along very well physically. I feel good. And uh, life for me has um, become fairly close to normal, uh, other than the fact that I really miss the game. Times like these, uh, great excitement, just love it. We just saw some video of you giving away the ball and the jersey that you were wearing the day of your injury. Why'd you do that? Well, the jersey, I wanted these young men to know that there are obstacles in life that they can overcome. I've done it and they can do it. And tonight's a wonderful opportunity for them to overcome a hurdle in their life. The football was the football, the game ball that I was given after the New York Jets beat the Buffalo Bills one week after my injury. That New York Jets team was a beat-up team, beat-up bunch of guys, and they came and they beat a very good Buffalo football team that went on to play in the Super Bowl that year. And uh, the whole idea is that they can do it if they'll put their minds to it. Great, Dennis. Thank you so much, and we're so happy to see you up and about. Steve? White able to complete to Curtis Fagan for the first down to the 37 of Tulsa. It's a gain of 17. Alex, thank you. 
I'll tell you what, growing up in the New York area, I know Dennis Bird from his days with the Jets and prior to the injury, he was one of the more popular players in the whole area. A lot of people, Dennis Bird fans, even more of them now. Well, I think all of us across the country who saw that play, that injury, where we all thought he would be paralyzed forever. And to see him walking now is just incredible. And that was the message he delivered to Tulsa. He said, hey, I've overcome something. You guys can overcome something here tonight. Right now, they're in a 3 nothing game with the number three team in the nation. Inside handoff to Kiwan Jones. That's his second carry of the game. Brandon Lohr made the stop for Tulsa. Well, Kiwan Jones likes playing in this stadium. I mean, this is a guy who was all everything, probably one of the best running backs ever to come out of the state of Oklahoma, a parade All-America. He was a redshirt freshman, didn't play last year, and they think he's the home run hitter for them this year. And he will remain in the game. Not a bad guy to give Quentin Griffith a little, yeah, little well, space, a yeah, little he, breather. He was at Jinx High School and had a great game here. State champion. Second down and nine. Curtis Fagan has it. Across the 30. And has the first down. You know, you mentioned that game. Jinx against Union. It's the great high school rivalry here in the state of Oklahoma. And Kiwan Jones was absolutely the star. Let's go back. September 14th of 2000, right here at Skelly Stadium. The biggest high school game of the year, and that is Kiwan Jones for Jenks. He had an 80-yard touchdown reception right here in the final seconds of the game. Put up 316 yards total offense, five touchdowns, again, including the game winner. So he is most comfortable, as you point out, here at Skelly Stadium. On first down and 10. White straight drop, pressure up the middle, and he's gonna get taken down. He's dropped to the 40-yard line by Brandon Lohr. Good pressure by Sam Rayburn as well. We talked about inexperience. A veteran quarterback would have gotten rid of that ball. You don't want to take yourself out of field goal position. He's going to get pressure from almost every angle, and he needs to get rid of the ball, but he keeps trying to make a play here. Offensive line slides one way, poor blocking. Now he's got to hold up and let it go. He keeps retreating. Now they're out of field goal range. They have, oh, second and forever right now, Steve. Loss of 14 on that sack. First of the game. Griffin has checked back in. Second and forever, I mean, second and 25. Little shovel pass underneath to the 40 to Griffin, and he is rocked by Josh Dupree. And Josh Dupree smelled that. He saw it right at the start. You know, that's tendencies. That's game planning by Keith Burns. Figuring, okay, second and long. They're not going to throw it deep here. They want to come up with a play. And what do they do? Shovel pass. And Dupree, spying on Quentin Griffin, smells it out. Brings up a third and 26. I am sure this was not in the playbook for the Oklahoma offense against Tulsa. Across the middle throw, wide open. White threw it behind his receiver, but it went off the hands of Clayton. Would have been a nice grab. And it brings up a fourth and 26. Well, White is a little bit rusty. I mean, here's a guy who's a little bit off, but he's not getting a lot of help from his receivers. They got to make those plays. I mean, those are difficult balls, but they ought to be able to catch those things. A little bit behind, a little bit low. They've dropped about three of those tonight. Blake Ferguson is back to punt it away. And there will not be a return. This one is in the end zone. 9.01 to go in the first half. This couldn't have gone any better to this point for Tulsa. They're down 3-0. Keith Burns on the sideline working his guys over. He said he's got to be consistent, just like his players. He said that they're going to look to him. They're going to look to their leader. And whether he's burning inside or not, he has to stay cool and calm and consistent. And that's tougher, tougher to do than it is to say. He's pretty stoked right now. First down and 10. Tulsa's got the football. Nine minutes to play in the half, trailing by three. Screen it out to the right side. It's Eric Richardson. And he's out to the 27-yard line. Derek Strait made the stop. And it'll bring up a second down and short. 
Rod, we touched earlier on the, the big upside for Tulsa in this game, but there is a downside for Oklahoma, and some of that is right now in a 3-0 game. Everybody will start saying, don't believe the hype. Oklahoma, the defense and everything, but the question will be, where's the offense? Why are they struggling? Why can't they put up 50 against this team? It's going to lead to a problem for them in the rankings if they don't win big. If the offense was already a question mark. Here they are really struggling against Tulsa. Not much happening there. Eric Richardson trying the right side on for his size. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. He'll bring up a third down. Lehman and Mitchell to stop. People are being critical of the Oklahoma schedule as well. Well, you know, you look and you say it's a two-game season, Texas and Colorado. But after what you've seen so far tonight, you start wondering <laughs> about Iowa State and Seneca Wallace in that offense and what trouble they could cause for Oklahoma. Alabama next week. All of a sudden you start thinking, whoa, maybe it's not all it's cracked up to be. See that Alabama game on ABC. Third down and three for Gooch and company. On the option, Gooch pitches it. First down and then some. It's Richardson down the right side. He's got some help and he's finally caught from behind the 35 by Teddy Lane. Richardson is putting on a show gain of 37 first down and then some well they're running the Oklahoma defense from side to side sweeps traps anything they're cutting these guys getting them on the ground and that means when you're on the ground you can't make a tackle and all Richardson does is pick his way around all of that nice job on offense we're seeing a lot of good stuff out of this offense we're seeing the sweeps that work we're seeing Oklahoma get tired running from sideline to sideline Richardson 69 yards on six carries and they're worried about his touches they only want on the hand of the ball probably 20 times maybe 15 carrying the football because of that size it's Richardson again Corey Klein makes the stop yeah but you know something that goes out the window where he's hot <laughs> if E. Rich is hot it's like give him the ball keep feeding him keep feeding him and now right now Steve I think this is where Tulsa's got to think about taking a shot you know you can't expect to just move the ball down the field on this defense and punch it in from 10 yards out in three plays you got to take your shots I think they're in the point in the field where this is where Gooch can threaten them on the perimeter and get the ball down the field. They come up out of the eye. Polata in front of Parrish. Off the play action. Gooch wants it, and he's taken down. Able to hang on to the football. Jonathan Jackson on the stop, but they were. They were going to take a shot. Yeah, and everybody knew it. Oklahoma smelled that one as well, so they came with it. You saw Lance Mitchell in there, and the speed that they used to get to the quarterback, the timing was destroyed. No protection. I mean, Gooch didn't have a chance. Play action, and all of a sudden, here comes Wilkerson. Right through two guys to get there. Flushes them out. And that's a problem. Good job just to hang on to the football there. Blindside hit. Third down and 16. Single setback remains Parrish. Here's Gooch under pressure, trying to dump it off. And they're going to say incomplete pass. Parrish tried to take it off his shoestrings. And I bring up a fourth down and 16. I think Gooch has annoyed at himself there, a low pass. Don't blame him. From the 42 on a fourth and 16, and we will see the punting unit for Tulsa. Court Moffitt take his time. Antonio Perkins is awaiting the kick at the 10-yard line. Moffitt is the transfer from New Mexico. Had a sit-out last year, so what did he do to keep busy? Played goalie for the soccer team. Got into one game and had a shutout. 1-0 over Eastern Illinois. And that goes into the end zone. I think they're going to mark it. Oh, wait a second. They're going to mark it. Jerome Janae got down there. Might have gotten it up, and it is spotted at the two-yard line. Court Muffet having a fine game. The punter for Tulsa, and it's still 3-0 Oklahoma. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football brought to you by Boeing. Forever New Frontiers, and by Gateway, where you've got a friend in the business.
back in Tulsa at Skelly Stadium in T-Town, as they call it. The stadium opened up in 1930, and Oklahoma finds themselves in a football game. The national powerhouse school many people feel will win the national title, or at least play in the upcoming Fiesta Bowl. Just a 3-0 lead, and they are backed up to their own two. First down and 10, from 98 yards in front of him. And White will hand it off. Jones is pushed right back, maybe pushed the pile a yard. Jorma Bailey the stop. Okay, Steve, in the NFL, this is a touchback. In college, he's got possession and control in the field of play. It's not where the ball player goes, it's where the ball is. And the officials determine control at the two-yard line. That's where they spot it. Janae is a talented player. In fact, Coach Burns was talking about it. He talked about recruiting, the recruiting battle. He's like, Janae could have played anywhere, and he's playing for us. And that's something they really feel good about here in Tulsa. Second down and 10. Again, right into the pile. Maybe a yard. That's Kiwan Jones again and Brandon Lore made the tackle and bring up a third down and long. And this is an interesting call right here. If you have a lot of confidence in your offense, you try and do a little something here because you know your defense is pretty darn good and can probably keep Tulsa from getting a big play. But if you don't want something bad to happen, you get conservative here and you just eke it out a little bit. To we'll find out something about Chuck Long and Kevin Wilson, guys who are running the offense for Oklahoma right here. On third down and nine, three receivers to White's left, bottom of your screen. White rolling in the end zone, he'll throw, and let's see. Waiting for the indication, and they're gonna say it's a catch. Will Peoples was there. Looks like there's some confusion by the two officials. Still have not made a definitive ruling. Still no ruling. Yeah, they're still talking about this one. And they are going to call it a catch, thus the reaction from Burns. First down, Oklahoma. That's a big play. Now watch, Peoples. Does he get his arms underneath the ball? And does he have control of it? That's a catch. That's a catch. I'm with you. Always. On first down and 10. White trying it himself, checking out the left knee, and it's just fine. Now he's got first down yardage to the 35. You know, going back, I think that third down throw was a big throw. It was a big throw for White. That told him that Chuck Long, the offensive coordinator, has a lot of confidence in him. He didn't hand the ball off. He put the game in his hands and said, throw it and get me a first down. Jason White obviously can run against Kansas last season. He was the first Oklahoma quarterback to ever rush for 100 yards and pass for 100 yards in the same game. It's Quentin Griffin. Nearly first down yardage. Might come up just shy. Second initials, Darrell Wimberly made the stop. The college football day, Saturday. Tomorrow will kick off at noon Eastern. Central Florida and Penn State. Here on ESPN, and then sixth rank Colorado will take on Colorado State at 1 Eastern over on ESPN 2. Colorado flew out Colorado State 41 14 last year. But hey, we had a 58 0 game in this matchup a season ago, and it's, at least for the time being, quite different. Here's Griffin down the sideline. One man to beat, and he's bumped out. The spot it at the seven, Jeff Thibodeau. Made the stop. How big is that third down throw now? Huge. Just huge. Almost as huge as this block. You'll see the center create the lane with a nice block in there, sealing off. Now watch this hole open up. Look at that thing. A nice, nice block. Vince Carter doing a great job. And Max Krause misses the tackle. Quentin Griffin, not the great speed that you have on other backs, but boy, does he have great vision. 50-yard run. He's got 155 yards in the game already on just nine carries. Brings up the first and goal, but there is a timeout on the field. Mm -hmm. Tulsa has used their second timeout of the half. 
will come back. First and goal, Oklahoma leading by three. If Oklahoma needed a wake-up call, I think the phone just rang. Oh, Up 3 nothing. just three minutes left in this first half. But they do have first and goal from the seventh. Yeah, the big pass play from White to Peoples, a 20-yard, kept this drive alive. Look at the numbers, Quentin Griffin. Got to think the running game. The snap gets away out of the shotgun. And White goes back all the way to the 30-yard line. So, Steve, how many bullets have been dodged tonight by Tulsa? That's another one. Golden Hurricane wearing the bulletproof vest for the time being. I mean, every time Oklahoma gets in a position to make a play, to take control of the game, something like this happens. They lose 21 yards on this thing here. They, had, they were in the midst of a 98-yard drive. Now they have to do it again. Loss of 20, so it's second and goal from about the 30. Right in trouble, going to be thrown down. But it looks like a face mask on the sack. Jorma Bailey, maybe that was the only piece he could have gotten of White. And that sack will be nullified. Tough break. Well, the Tulsa defense bounced back, you know, from the three bad plays that allowed Oklahoma to get inside the 10. And then this is just being too aggressive. You got another guy there to help you make a play, and Bailey grabs the face mask and hangs on to it. First of the foul, face mask, on the defense, automatic first down. Automatic first down, I'll bring it inside the 15. That's just being too eager, too aggressive. You gotta let go of the face mask. Yeah, he knows it. Bailey, the junior from Clearwater, Florida, missed the opener last season with a hand injury. He's always fired up about playing in the opener against the big boys from Norman here. On first down and 10 now. White looked like he wanted to run. Now throws, end zone, and it is. Let's see, is it intercepted? It is! Interception! They were wrestling for the football in the end zone, and it's Daryl Wimberly putting those wide receiver hands to good use. This is just a case of White trying to do too much. He didn't have a guy open. Wimberly was the leading receiver returning to the team this year and was moved to corner, and he shows you the good hands there. Stepped in front of Peoples and picked it off. I really thought White wanted to run the football. Well, he should have. And then he thought he had a target. Well, he, he just tried to do a little bit too much there. DJ Barnett is now the halfback behind Tyler Gooch. Off the play action, quick hitter to Montes Colton. And he's out to the 30-yard line. Coming up on two minutes to play in a 3-0 game. Let's send it back to Reese. Steve, I know we're all locked into some Friday night football, but they are playing baseball tonight. We'll tell you about the new deal between the players and the owners. Some quarterbacks getting hurt both on the field and off. We'll talk about that. Trev Alberts and Mark May will be here to tell you who else is going to get a fight like Oklahoma's getting tonight tomorrow. We'll also look at that high school game of the week coming up. All right, Reese, we look forward to that. If I don't hear from Donald Fear for the next 10 years, I'm okay with that. All right. Way to go, baseball people. Figured it out, didn't you? On second down and one, they call him a whole lot of fullback. That is Mark Holata for Tulsa. Tommy Harris made the stop. That was a second and one, and they are moving the chains. First down, Golden Hurricane. You think maybe Bob Stoops will have something to say to his guys at halftime? We were in Keith Burns' uh, locker room prior to the game. Yeah, I'd like to be in the Bob Stoops' locker room at halftime. Oh, but the players wouldn't. <laughs> Not at all. Minute five left in the first half. Five seconds to get it away, and they do. 
Garrell Parrish, the ball carrier, out to the 36-yard line. Good strategy here. You know, everybody's making mistakes. You can go in at halftime down 3 nothing. Why take a chance and maybe have a pick, a fumble or something? Go ahead. Take it in at halftime and get the big crowd cheering for you. 40 seconds left to play. I think Burns would have signed up for a 3 nothing deficit at halftime a couple of weeks ago. Said, so you can give me that, I'll take it. And he's got it right now. Second and four. They're going to pass. Set up the screen. Try the left side. It's juggled, but Parrish able to bring it down. And Mitchell brings him down. Shy of the first down. And that could do it. to run another play and at least for 30 minutes there's a shocker going on at Skelly Stadium here in Tulsa let's go down to Alex Bob Stoops what has surprised you most tonight about Tulsa's play well uh, they're, they're playing well but uh, you know the bottom line with us we have three drop balls in the red zone on third down and two turnovers uh, in the red zone so you're not going to score if you do that what are you going to tell him in the locker room uh, just have some poise, catch the football, take care of the football, and then you got a chance. Okay, great. Thank you. So you don't think he'll be that cool and composed in the locker room when he's addressing <laughs> the troops the same way he was addressing Alex? I'm going to stay up here. I don't want to be in the locker room. Time of possession. Advantage Tulsa by five minutes. It's a moral victory, at least for now. We're 3-0 at the half. We send you back to Reese Davis. Steve, thank you very much. We heard Keith Burns in the locker room before the game. I'm not sure we believed him when he said that you guys can play with him. Apparently, his players did. They definitely did. They came out fired up, and they played well on both sides of the ball. But what's key about this game, they came in with a sound game plan offensively. Keith Burns wanted to decide to shorten this game on the field. He wanted to make sure that offensively, when they took that ball, they ran that play clock down to under five seconds on every snap. Let me just say this. I mean, Oklahoma has a great defense. They've played very well. But I don't think that this offense is good enough. I mean, right now, this offensive line is not blocked very well. This is not a national championship type offense. Sure, they've run the ball well with Quentin Griffith, but the turnovers are killing this offense. If this team is really going to make it, this offense got to play much better. Not playing well at all. Still early in the season right now. Right. We've got to have to go, but you've got to take your hat off to the way Tulsa played with a lot of emotion in the first half. 3 nothing at the break. Coming up on the halftime report. Our high school showcase game of the week, Woodland Hill, Pittsburgh, and David Carr, the Houston Texans, see their franchise Ooh. flash before their eyes. We'll get an update in a bit. Oklahoma had a police escort for their two-hour ride to Tulsa. Might the Golden Hurricane be thinking about stealing the game? Steve Levy, Rod Gilmore, thoughts from Alex Flanagan in just a bit. So obviously surprised. Anybody who's watching this ball game is surprised. <laughs> How shocked should we be? Only well, I a think, half. Oh, well, I think we ought to be pretty shocked, but I think the thing that really surprises me is that the confidence isn't there for the offense for Oklahoma. They should have some by now, but all the mistakes, all the inexperience at the quarterback position has led them to be, oh, tentative and making poor plays. So that's got to turn around for them in the second half or else it's going to be a long season for that offense. Oklahoma, fresh from their locker room, they will get the football. Court Moffitt will kick it away. And it's a short kick from the 15-yard line. Oklahoma. It was Russell Dennison. The upbacks bringing it up. And we get to the game track from our first half. Tulsa was hanging tough. Had the big run by Eric Richardson for 34 yards to open things up. And Oklahoma, they got some things going up there. Well, the running game was there. Quentin Griffin was doing it, almost 18 yards of carry in the first half for him. But it was miscues by Oklahoma that hurt them. All sorts of opportunities. You want to give credit to Tulsa, but really you have to look at the missed opportunities by Oklahoma in that first half. White comes out firing to Trent Smith. We talk about the missed opportunities. Derek Strait dropped a, an interception that was in the red zone. And then you have three drop passes. You have a snap go over White's head. And the interception. So those five things Smith kept them the from putting points. Yep, in the, the red yep, zone. Absolutely. Turned it over. Six things. Second down and five. First drive rather important. And it looks pretty good right now. Quentin Griffin. 
chase him down the sideline. And he is bumped out inside the 20. Jeff Thibodeau able to push him out, but not until Griffin ripped off a 44-yard run. Well, Quentin Griffin has been the guy they go back to whenever they have trouble. It's just a simple, you know, zone play. They get nice blocking inside there, and he finds his way to the outside. If you notice, when he breaks loose, he always tries to get to the sideline, as a good runner should. Griffin, 10 carries, 199 yards. And Oklahoma only has three points on the board. Griffin again running hard to the far side. And he's banged down around the 10-yard line by Max Krause of Tulsa. Now he just doesn't get the credit he should get. He's, he's only 5'7", 190 pounds, bench presses over 400 pounds. That's why he's hard to tackle. I mean, this guy is just a fire hydrant that just rolls through there. You try to tackle him, you're likely to bounce right off. And his coaching staff say he's impossible to get out of the game. He never wants to come out. Doesn't want to come out of scrimmages even. He's got Keywon Jones behind him. That's right. Little flip on the option. It's Griffin again. He takes himself down. We'll see where they spot it. Likely in front of the marker. <laughs> he, at this point, he's the only guy who can tackle himself. I know. But if, if I had Keywon Jones behind me, I Let's wouldn't want to come out of the field either. <laughs> Competition is a good thing. Yeah, and Bob Stoops believes in that. And he tells his guys that it's always competition, every position. And Keywan Jones is fighting to get time. He thinks he can be the home run back for Oklahoma. Kevin Wilson, their running game coordinator, said the tailback might be the most talented position we have. And he said, alluding to exactly what you're talking about, Rod, sometimes the best running back won't be on the field. When he was at Northwestern, it was Damian Anderson and Damian Anderson. He certainly is intense. He also made a good point about coaching. He said, coaches nowadays, they don't tell the kids to play hard. They don't say that enough. They're so concerned with technique, yep. doing this, doing that. Just tell them to play hard every once in a while. First and goal from the eight. Inside handoff, it's Keyon Jones. Touchdown, Oklahoma. the short kickoff the good field position they go five plays 67 yards Trey DiCarlo lines up for his first collegiate extra point attempt it is up and it is good less than two minutes into the second half and Oklahoma find themselves with a 10 nothing lead how will the Golden Hurricane respond now? Back in Tulsa, and the complexion of this one has just changed slightly. Oklahoma now up 10 to nothing over Tulsa. To see how the Golden Hurricane respond. Trey DiCarlo kicks it away. It's Rombi Bryant turning it upfield. He was out of the 20, and he's pushed back to the 16-yard line. We're back to that last touchdown. Well, Keith Burns has told his guys he made a bad call, and here's why. You look that there's no one here for Wes Sims and these guys to block. There's an influence play with a cutback coming, so he doesn't have enough support there. Sims, the tackle, gets on the linebacker. There's nobody up front for him to deal with. Huge hole for Keywon Jones to get in for the touchdown. Keith Burns said, my fault, guys, not yours. That one's on me. You have to look back to last year's game, the 58-0 game. It was 3-0, then it was 6-0, and then Oklahoma scored on six straight possessions. So even if Tulsa doesn't get a score here, they need something. Three and out could really kill them. Here's Gooch, off the play action. Throws the short pass, picks up the short game, the tight end Caleb Blankenship, and we hit the field, and here's Alex. 
Well, you guys, all season long or all preseason long, Ken Burns has been telling his team that they are like Rocky from the movie. He's been showing them clips of the movie Rocky, telling them that they are the Sylvester Stallone character. And his halftime speech was no different. He got in there and he said, you guys, you've got to keep on fighting. So that's what they're doing. And as they came out onto the field, you could hear the Rocky theme music in the back. So expect them to keep the fight alive. Steve? Alex, thank you. I'm sure the kids are so young. You know, Rocky, <laughs> what, what was that? Rocky, one, two, three, four, or five. Uh, did Rocky get knocked down? Did Paul Creed knock him down? Yeah, a bunch, bunch of times, yeah. Oh, okay, he got, got up. up. Went right. the distance. That was Rocky one. Stepping up is good, trying to make something. It took a head-on collision hit and fumbled the football. Oklahoma says they have it. Tulsa says they have it. Gooch looked like he took a helmet shot there and coughed up the football. And the officials are saying Gooch got it back. The quarterback looks to be fine. He's got to be even better knowing that he had the football. Now he's a tough guy. That's the one thing everybody says about him. The Oklahoma coaches watched him play in high school, and they said, yeah, you know, he's a good quarterback. He can throw it. But the thing we like about him, he's a tough guy. And you saw his toughness on that play. He gave up the ball but then got in there with the linemen and fought to get it back. A lot of quarterbacks would have let it go. His coach told us the reason he's the captain is because of those skills you talked about, not because he's the quarterback, which sometimes can be so automatic. Not the case here. Third and one. He'll pitch it out to the right side for Eric Richardson. Lance Mitchell and Teddy Lehman brought him down. But he had first down yardage, and they'll move the chains. Exactly what Tulsa needed, at least, to get a first down. Hey, when you line up and you say it's third and short yardage against perhaps the best defense in college football, and you run it and you get it, that is a confidence builder for your team. Eric Richardson, E. Rich, is having a pretty fair night himself. 72 yards already. But sooner or later, they're going to have to go for a big play. I don't think they can do a 12 or 14 play drive and get six points out of it. Bound to make a mistake on one of those long, time-consuming drives. Let's see. First down and 10. Single setback. As Richardson, they hand it to him. Tumbles ahead. Derek Strait put the stick on him. And we send it back to Reese Davis. And Steve Allen High School Showcase Game of the Week. Woodland Hills against Shaler area in Western Pennsylvania. 19-0 Woodland. Dennis Selman going back and finding Ryan Mundy, the highly recruited one, getting his second touchdown of the night. And Woodland Hills and Wolverines up 26-0 deep in the fourth. No surprise when you consider that offensive line for Woodland Hills. They've got three guys around 300 pounds. Right. A high school team. It's simply amazing. Second down and seven. They're raising them bigger these days, Rod. Here's Gooch. He'll spin for the extra yard out to the 36. Lance Mitchell brought him down. And each week here on Friday Night Football, we will feature a top-notch high school game from around the country. So high school kids, get excited. We got a big game coming up. You got a real shot of senior highlights on ESPN. You know, they're going to have a good one here in Oklahoma in a few weeks. You know, Jinx and Union. Uh, that's the biggest one here, and you're talking about, you know, Kiwan Jones' alma mater against Tyler Gooch's alma mater. And sometimes when they play for a state championship, they'll play it here in this stadium in front of 40,000 fans. It is a huge deal in state. On third down and four, Gooch will keep it. Teddy Lehman brought him down. Going to be shy of the first down marker. Maybe a yard or two. Well, one of the things... Dan Lounsbury, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday, he said, I want to stay within three scores. I'm not going to panic. He's only down by two scores right now, which is why he didn't pull out, you know, something dramatic on that third down play. He figures, hey, I'm not going to risk it here. I want to get to the fourth quarter and have a chance. Moffitt is back to punt, standing at his own 24-yard line. The dangerous Antonio Perkins is standing at his own 20. Not a problem getting it away. It is a nice, high, spiraling kick. Perkins all the way back inside his 10. Breaks a tackle. Comes up the middle. Breaks another tackle. Good night. 40, 50. See you later. And there are no flags. <laughs> 91-yard punt return by Antonio Perkins. 
had one called back earlier. There are no flags. This one will stand. On a team that is loaded with speed, he is the fastest of the Oklahoma Sooners. A sub 4 3 40 yard dash. And once he gets to that first wave, good night. Here's Trey to Carlo. On to boot the extra point through, and he does. All of a sudden, what was looking so promising for Tulsa got a reaction of, uh oh, 17 0 Sooners. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football brought to you by Undisputed, starring Wesley Snipes and Ving Rames, now in theaters everywhere. And by Super Mario Sunshine. Good, clean fun. Only for Nintendo GameCube. On a night like this, with the number three ranked Sooners in Tulsa, you wonder, probably a slow night at Bell's Amusement Park in the shadows of Skelly Stadium. Tulsa fans might have been amused early on, but there's got to be some fear creeping in. Uh, and for those who were here a year ago, you know, there has to be that, that thought of here we go again. Yeah, fear or reality or this clock striking 12. Trey DiCarlo will kick it off. Robbie Bryant and Jerome Janae are back. Tulsa needs a return. Bromby will get a chance from the five. Runs into a pack of players out to the 19-yard line. Got to go back to that brilliant return. Watch the missed tackle, Steve. But this is what speed does to you. One, two, three, missed tackles. With that kind of speed, you don't practice it in preseason, and the first game, you're very vulnerable. You don't see guys like that all the time, and that accounts for the missed tackles by Tulsa. For Perkins, that is tied for the third longest punt return in Oklahoma history. The longest, you ask? A 96-yard punt return in 1966 by Eddie Hinton. Living around 107 years, Oklahoma has. So when you set a record to come close, that is significant. Mark Holot of the ball carrier, second of the game, and just picks up maybe a yard. Well, if you're Tulsa, you got to have something good happen. Whether that is a, a long drive or a big play, confidence is important now. you got to have something. You can't put that defense back out on the field right now after a punt return and then giving up a touchdown to start the third quarter. The offense has to deliver something right now. Second down and 10. Oklahoma showing blitz. They're coming to the hand. Coming late. Drop back into the zone there. And then it's an incomplete pass by Gooch looking for Sean Yoder who bailed him out on a key play in the first half. Well, tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, part of the holiday weekend bash presented by AT&T Wireless. It's Notre Dame against Maryland. The final kickoff classic event. Tyrone Willingham makes his debut as head coach of the Fighting Irish. I know you wish him an awful lot of luck. I absolutely. At Notre Dame, it has a very fine defense, and Maryland is without Bruce Perry, a great running back. It could be a defensive struggle. Terps aren't going to sneak up on anybody this season after a brilliant campaign last year. Gooch stepping up back to the original line of scrimmage to the 20, and nothing going right now for the Tulsa offense. This is kind of what we expected to see in the first half, but it didn't really materialize. Yeah, and the bad thing for Tulsa, it's a three and out. It's a second three and out of the third quarter. You know, they're on skates right now, and they got to find a way to stop it. They're sliding back, the punt return, the, 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 the large drive to start the third quarter. They got to find a way to hold it up, and the defense is tired right now. They got to get them back out there. Could be a problem. 7.50 left here in the third quarter. The Tulsa offense so far in this quarter, just 20 yards. Moffitt, who's had a terrific game to this point. I was going to say the most consistent player for Tulsa has been their punter. But that one is a short one, goes out of bounds, and Oklahoma will take over. 
by a score of 17 to nothing. We come to you from Skelly Stadium, Tulsa, Oklahoma. The big boys, the number three ranked Sooners are in town. And again, this was a 3-0 game at halftime. Steve Levy alongside Rod Gilmore again will be here with you on Friday nights. Now, we realize we're sharing the national stage for 100 years. Friday nights belong to high school football. We're going to do a good job with that. Reese Davis earlier showing the highlights from a great high school game all over the country. But there's something special. We're the sort of the, the meat in a college football sandwich. Thursday yeah. to Saturday, we're the guys in the middle. Yeah, Friday we're going to have some good things on Friday night. You talked about the high school guys, but we'll have games like this. You got a first and 10 with White and the offense trying to get going. At that time, it's Griffin. The short punt. 22 yards from Moffitt, who again had to this point probably been the most consistent player for Tulsa. Well, I think that's right. And the other thing that's really important to note here is halftime adjustments or halftime discussions. And Bob Stoops, I think, is at the top of the, the chain in coaching right now. And what he's done at halftime has been really great for his team. I mean, he's got them going. Out of the shotgun. White will complete to Quentin Griffin. Bob Stoops will turn 42 years old in some 10 days from now. His younger brother, of course, is his co-defensive coordinator, Mike Stoops, was not that much younger, only separated by 15 months. Well, I think he is the next Steve Spurrier, or is Steve Spurrier in college football right now. I mean, Spurrier was great for college football. He's gone on. But now there's another guy in Stoops who is candid, will speak his mind. And I think, I think that's great. And he and Spurrier are great friends. They talk a couple times a week. And they don't shy away from telling you how good they are on their team. <laughs> I, think, I think that's wonderful. It's kind of it's really different, you're right, in college football to hear from those two particular coaches. Brandon Lohr is being helped off the field for Tulsa. And if we get any word on him, we will pass it along. Out of the shotgun now on third down and 11. Throw it across the middle, wide open and dropped. Will Peoples, second drop for Peoples on the night. That ball was right there. Well, it's been a bad night for Oklahoma receivers. And they've got Alabama next week. They're going to get a lot of work and practice. And this is just one that, you know, you got to get. Maybe you don't have to leave your feet. Peoples has had a couple of those go off his hands today. And Jason White needs to have some help. His receivers have got to pick him up to help his confidence. White, 9 of 17 for 71 yards passing and the one pick. But his numbers, as you point out, probably should be better than that. Blake Ferguson, the punt. And this will be a touchback in the end zone. Six and a half to play in the third quarter. Tulsa's got the football. They trail by 17. Friday night. Back in Tulsa, there's you see number 70, Brandon Lohr being attended to. That was not his original number. He was wearing number 97, but decided to change to number 70 to honor his brother Jason, who suffered his second straight season-ending knee injury at Nebraska. And now Brandon is dealing apparently with a knee injury of his own. We'll see if Alex can get any more information on that. Six and a half to go, third quarter. First down and 10 for Tulsa. They have started every single possession in the game inside their own 30. And here they start from the 20 yard line after the touchback. Out of the eye, second man through is Eric Richardson, maybe a yard on the play. Well, you're probably not going to line up and just run the ball at Oklahoma and do very well. I mean, Pasha Jackson may be a rookie in this league, but he was an All American at San Francisco City College, along with uh, Lance Mitchell, the other linebacker. So they bring size. They're both about 6'3", 240, 245, and speed, about 4'5", 4'5", 4'5", 4'5", They bring winning. Both won national, back-to-back -back national titles, going 24-0 last couple of years. Hand it off to the first man through. It's Mark Holada. I'll tell you, Dennis Bird was on hand. He's not the only Tulsa alum that played in the NFL. Let's go down to Alex. No, he's not. We have the Republican uh, nominee for governor here, Steve Largent, who played at Tulsa. You're a phenomenal wide receiver. Give me a little bit of your assessment of tonight's game. Well, I think all the T supporters are just uh, ecstatic with the performance in the first half. It's getting away from a little bit here. But I think the team has really uh, done very, very well. We're excited. We want to get our program back into national uh, limelight. 
14 years for you with the Seattle Seahawks. What brought you back home to Tulsa? I love this state. This is the state that I was born and raised in. Uh, I'm an Oklahoman by birth and choice. And uh, and that's really why I'm running for governor. I want to see our state do well. All right, Steve Largen, thanks so much. Thank you, Alex. Alex, thanks. Robbie Bryant, the catch. Derek Strait made sure he knew he was in the neighborhood with a pretty good hit. Under five to go. It was a big hit, and it was up kind of high, and it was in that dangerous area where you get up around the helmet where you can get flagged. Punting situation again. Court Moffitt will come back out. Talked about large and kind of an up-and-down week for a Tulsa alum in the NFL. Jerry Ostrowski announced his retirement, the fine offensive lineman for the Buffalo Bills. And Gus Farad named starting quarterback Cincinnati Bengals. Tulsa alum playing in the NFL. Moffitt back to his old ways with that punt. Pretty good bounce. And it'll go out. They'll mark it at the 12, uh, the rather the 17-yard line. And that's where Oklahoma will take over. Steve Largent, as Alex pointed out, 14 years. The Seattle Seahawks ended with NFL records for receptions and yards and touchdowns, etc. And starred here for Tulsa in the early 70s. What I don't get is, how could he have gone to the NFL and been cut? That's right. I mean, he was picked up by Seattle after, I believe, Houston Houston cut Oilers. Him. And there you see uh, Drew Pearson. Looks like he made a good decision moving away from the quarterback position, huh? <laughs> that wide receiver worked out just fine for Drew Pearson. Trent Smith on the receiving end. C.J. Scott made the stop. Well, you see some pretty good receivers coming out of Tulsa. They have a history of it. Drew Pearson, obviously, great with the Dallas Cowboys. Howard Twilley, Miami Dolphins. And large in all of his success with the Seattle Seahawks. Talking uh, politics and, and football, I'm sure Oklahoma fans, hey, don't forget our guy, J.C. Watts, of course, retiring a U.S. congressman, quarterback the Sooners to eight, to big eight titles in 79 and 80. Putting Griffin, the ball carrier there. Umabong made the that stop. That was back in the day. You know, J.C. Watts didn't throw the football much. Well, yeah, we're running that option. You know, honestly, I, I pulled you aside. We were talking about uh, Curtis Fagan for Oklahoma, and I said, you know, he has the school record, seven touchdown catches, in one season. Is that a misprint? Is that a mistake? I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot when you look around guys around the country. I say, what, are you kidding me, though? I mean, they just started throwing the football a couple years ago. <laughs> That's the first time they heard of the shotgun was uh, last season. On third down and five now. Short pass complete to Smith. First down, keep the chains moving. Josh Dupree was able to make the stop. This is Jason's drive. This is for his confidence. You know, he's had guys drop balls. Chuck Long is going to him, you know, to get his confidence going. Remember, this is a quarterback who has not played an awful lot. Chuck Long is a former quarterback, quarterback at Iowa, was a great All-American. He understands that role, that feel, that you got to get your quarterback comfortable. It's his first year's coordinator, and he's relying on White right now to get that confidence by letting him throw the football. Lost out on the Heisman in the closest voting ever to Bo Jackson. That's a bad year to be a star in college football. Bo was doing his thing. Here's White on the move, now throwing and completing. Across the middle of the field again, it's his favorite target, Trent Smith, and there is a flag. Holding penalty is called against Oklahoma. We'll bring it back. Holding. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Down to Alex Flanagan. Steve, bad news for Brandon Lohr, as you may be able to see his tears in his eyes. He's been told that he has torn his ACL. At least oh. that's what they believe. He is out for the rest of the game, if not uh, many games after that. It's awful news, especially when talked about his brother Jason dealing with the same kind of thing. Tough luck for the Lohr family. As Griffin carries the football out to the 31-yard line, Brendan Swisher made the stop. 
you hate to see players go down with injuries and it's it's particularly difficult to watch that in the opening game of the season guys work so hard in the offseason they work so hard in camp and then to open up in the opening night have an injury and see your entire season go away that is so devastating for a player makes you I guess try to work even harder to get back than you had originally worked just to get in great shape off the quick pass, big gainer, it's Curtis Fagan. He's across midfield, out to the 44, gain of 22 on the play. And White clearly seems to be gaining confidence with each throw. Well, I'm sure at some point somebody told the receivers, hey, step up, catch the ball, help him out. He's doing his job, you do yours. They're running after the catch. Watch Fagan here. This is a, just a quick hitch. And now he just gets it done after he makes the catch. And now they're relying on that. They're relying on White. That's good stuff for Jason White. White is at five of his last six. The other one miss officially was a drop. That's Kiwan Jones, the ball carrier. Starting to churn this clock down. Under a minute and a half to play here in the third quarter. In case you're just joining us, Friday night football. Thrilled to be bringing it to you. College football every Friday night on ESPN. Oklahoma led by just three at halftime. This was a three nothing game at the break and have been able to score the big punt return and it's a 17 nothing football game. Well, there's Kiwan Jones. He's back in the game. You know it's funny you know you you look at his high school numbers and it's like that Madden football stuff <laughs> it, it, you look at it, you say can't be real how can a guy get 300 all-purpose yards almost every time he plays and I'll tell you what cut tough tough for Jones who calls Brandon Lore his best friend yeah. so you know Jones has to be thinking about it while he's on the football field right now here's Ronaldo works getting into the game and his first carry Banging down to the 25-yard line. Uh, Works is competing for some playing time because he was the guy behind Quentin Griffin last year. And now he finds himself kind of sharing the load with Kiwan Jones. And so Works has to, has to work hard here. Kiwan Jones, 29 touchdowns as a high school senior. I mean, so, it's that Madden stuff, man. You know, I, I don't normally mention high school numbers, as I'm sure you don't, because everybody's got great high school numbers, or you're not playing at this level, but, but that stood out that's, just that's a little crazy, bit. crazy, you know? Jones again, the ball carrier. Ripping through. 12 seconds left in the third quarter. Oklahoma, with all the talent they now have to carry the football. Again, this was the number 89 rushing team in the country. And if they get the offensive line play they hope to, their running game figures to be in good shape. Oklahoma has 231 yards on the ground in this game. Pick a back, any back. Fourth quarter is coming up. Sooners lead 17-0. Keith Burns and Tulsa hanging in there. 17-0 game as they open up quarter number four. Burns made a good point. He talked about how they're, you know, if Michigan comes in or Florida, Florida State, they might spend a quarter being intimidated by the opposing helmet. But they grew up with these kids. A lot of them are high school teammates or opponents. You see them on the news, the newspaper all the time. I don't think they were intimidated early. I think you're right about that. I think he was right, too. Nice when everybody's right. On second down and one. Off the play action. And it is picked off. Intercepted by Tulsa. Well, Jason Wiltshire, who was not expected to play, was banged up, dressed in the game, and leads to the turnover on the interception. Well, and that's just going to drive. Chuck Long crazy. I mean, you get a great drive out of Jason White, and he just makes a bad throw. A bad throw and a bad decision. And he's made a couple of those in the red zone. And that's what they're going to work on this week with him, being better in the red zone, making better decisions, giving your yourself another chance and another play. That was a second-in-one play. You didn't have to do that. Let it go. Come back and play the next play. Is that a lack of concentration? I think it's a, I think it's inexperience. I think he hasn't played enough games. He hasn't been in the situation enough to really be cognizant of it. First down and 10. Gooch trying to get something going. Taking a shot down the field. He had the man. And he just overthrew Romby Bryant. It was there. 
All right, game track as we look back on the events that have taken place so far. Oklahoma has started from their own two, a 98-yard touchdown drive. Oh, and then Perkins got loose. He got to showcase that sub-4-3 speed on a huge 91-yard return that really kind of broke the back of Tulsa in the third quarter. And uh, we'll see if the Cinderella factor is over. The Golden Hurricane take over now on second down and 10. After long incompletion, option, Gooch will keep it. Out ahead of the 21, he takes some punishment. And for now, he keeps on ticking. You know, it's amazing, you look at that Oklahoma defense, and you mentioned at the top of the show, no Rocky Counts, no Roy Williams. And yet, they fly around, they make tackles, they look just as good as he did last year. A little shaky on the very first drive, but beyond that, who knew? People always associate speed with offense, right? This guy's a burner, the wide receiver, the tailback. Oklahoma is as fast a defense as you'll find in the nation as well. Even their big guys in the middle, the defensive line, can run. Agile. Pass batted up in the air and knocked away. It was batted by Lynn Magruder and knocked away. And it'll bring up a fourth down and a punting situation for Tulsa. Corey Klein nearly had the pick. Well, following up on your point about speed, you're right. They've got it all over the place. They average about 4-5 on their starting lineup running the 40-yard dash. That's incredibly fast when you consider the big guys as well. And Stoops tells us he now looks for great athletes to put on defense because of the passing game now. you got to put the great athletes on defense. When you talk about speed, well, his brother, Mike Stoops, talked about speed. He said... We look for speed, but not your high school 40 times. We look for the real speed, catch-up speed, the kind of speed where you can stop on a dive and change direction. This is the eighth punt of the game for Court Moffitt. He's got to be worn out from the 10-yard line. Perkins won't have a chance. Nah, he's not going to get Goes out of bounds. <laughs> we'll find out Rodney's 40 speed. <laughs> high school, college. When we come back, 17-0 sooner. 17-0, the third-ranked Sooners out in front of Tulsa early on in the fourth quarter. More great football for you under the lights tomorrow night. Clemson and number 12, Georgia. David Green was second amongst freshman quarterbacks in passing a season ago. Yeah, Ben Roethlisberger was number one from Miami of Ohio. Remember that one? Absolutely. Clemson has just two wins and 21 tries at Sanford Stadium. We'll see what happens tomorrow night on this play, Kiwan Jones. Broke it free. He's right about the first down marker. As we are in the early stages of quarter number four. You think there was any thought on the Oklahoma bench about Nate Hibble at any point in time? You know, it, by Tulsa keeping this close, they really have hurt Oklahoma because you know the Sooner coaching staff wanted to play some of their second and third string guys. The fact is, this is still a ball game right now, and they can't be fooling around and experimenting. Keyon Jones trying to put the end of this ball game. Look at that. Lowers the shoulder and the helmet inside the 25. Thibodeau and McCorey brought him down, but not until after. He ripped off 39 yards. You think he likes this stadium? Now, remember, he redshirted it last year, so he didn't play. So in his senior year, his last game was here. That's and right. And he went off. And he comes back tonight. Hey, he thinks it's easy. Just play every game in this stadium. And he can have a ball. It was interesting to hear from some of the Tulsa players who could have gone to Oklahoma. Janae's an example. Local players who, who decide, you know, I'd rather play right away then play on a team that's going to be in the national championship by the game. Quentin Griffin. The ball carrier. And he is brought down a couple of times by Keith and McCoy. Really, you know, two schools of thought there for those kind of players. You want to play right away on a team that's not ex much expected out of you, or do you want to go to Oklahoma where you be in the national picture every year? Well, you know, you want to play. I mean, most guys want to play. And, you know, this is a great area for football. So there really is not a downside. All the guys want to be recruited by Oklahoma, but they also like it. If they don't go there, they get a shot at Tulsa. Second down and three. Really no lose when you look at it that way. Griffin trying the left side off the size five. Inside the five. Down to the two-yard line. Jeremy Davis brought him down. 
For Griffin, this is a new career-high football game. The senior from Texas, his previous high, 201 yards against Air Force last year. He's ripped off 236 yards. Again, a new career game for Quentin Griffin. Well, that offensive line is simply overpowering Tulsa, and they have a huge advantage in size. I mean, three sophomores, two seniors, and they outweigh those guys by about 75 to 100 pounds apiece. So the 300 yards rushing by Oklahoma. You know, Steve, except for Rayburn up front, who's a 300-pounder, they don't have a guy who's better than 240, 235 up front. We'll step out with 11.58 to play. Here at quarter number four, Sooners by 17. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football brought to you by Union Pacific, Building America, and by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. We are back just in time for first and goal for Oklahoma. Potentially trying to put this score out of reach. Already up 17 nothing. Hand it off to Kiwan Jones. And he's not there. Inching closer to the goal line, Drew Lego made the stop. The true freshman from South Lake, Texas. Well, this is a real tough time now for Tulsa. I mean, you're trying to dig down, you're tired, you're trying to find a way to get something good, something positive. A goal line stand would be that, but it's a tough spot. Come up out of the eye here on second down and goal. Second man through. Touchdown. Keelan Jones makes it look easy. His second touchdown of the game. See what kind of fight is left in Tulsa. 23 to nothing now. Here's DiCarlo on for the extra point. DiCarlo is just fine. Has a field goal, three extra points to his credit. Josh Roberts was the highly touted freshman kicker they figured to have. Turned out to be a no-show. And DiCarlo came in just in the nick of time. Well. He showed up and he got it done for them and Bob Stoops told us, hey, I like this kid. He's confident. He steps up every pressure situation we put him in in practice. He just drilled everything. And he's been drilling them tonight. The Sooners now have their highest rushing total since Bob Stoops took over as head coach. 302 yards. I'll send you down to Alex. Steve, uh, one of the things that Coach Burns wanted to do coming into this season was create a greater sense of unity among his team, win or lose. And to do that, he held what he called a dedication night the other night. He uh, got a theater, made it all black. He got a helmet, a Tulsa helmet, put it in the center of the theater with a spotlight on it, and then had all of his players come up and put their hand on that helmet. And then he had them say what they were going to do for the team, what the team could expect of them. I guess there were a lot of tears in that theater as Tyler Gooch got up and said that no no matter what, win or lose, he will follow his coach and believe in him. Steve? Pretty powerful stuff. Addressing his coach. You want to talk about accountability, right? That is the essence of accountability. You put your hand on that helmet and speak from the heart for the other 70 or 80 guys who are in that room. DiCarlo kicks it away. And the run back by Cheney is out to the 22-yard line. And that's where Tulsa will start. Still looking for their first points of the football game. And reacting to what the Alex was talking about, Lounsbury, their offensive coordinator, this has really surprised me. In fact, he's been in this college football coaching 26 years. You'd think he'd seen everything. He said he's never seen anything like dedication. Though. Well, it was really dramatic what he had to say about all that and what they went through. And it's all about team chemistry. Keith Burns told us that he needed to create chemistry. Lounsbury said it was the most dramatic thing he's ever seen. And they've done other things to create that team chemistry, like Madden football tournaments and things like that. But just when you think, you know, every idea, everything has been used up in college football. 
not the case. Well, they, Co coaches keep, keep they coming got, up with something else. Bryant, they, the intended target. Mitchell pounded him. You know, they, they got rid of a lot of the meetings at night during their fall camp, and they had the dedication night, and they had, I think, over two or three nights, they had a, uh, a Madden tournament, the video game, and the final game was, I think, you know, Jets against Tampa Bay or something right. like that. And they had all the players. You had to pick a side. You had to root for one team or the other, and it brought a lot of team unity. Great yeah. ideas. Coach Burns, who was certainly under fire last season during the one-win season, a big quarterback controversy here locally. Tyler Gooch is his guy now. Gooch is rolling to the right. A pass, a good catch. Jermaine Landrum able to make the catch spin around and get some yardage. But you know, you mentioned that quarterback controversy, and it had the potential to be a real big problem for him because of the personalities involved. You're talking about a guy, you know, Josh Blankenship, who was a well-liked and well-respected quarterback coming out of Union High School, where his dad was the coach. And then he was replaced by Gooch. So that created an immediate problem. What to do for your future in recruiting? Right. And here, you know, you mentioned his dad, who, oh, by the way, led Tulsa in passing, played here at 77 and 79. Bill Blankenship. And uh, Josh has gone to uh, Eastern Washington. I believe he'll open up their season tomorrow night. Here's Gooch under pressure. Good feet there to just stay on his feet. He slides out of bounds, the first down marker. First down, Tulsa. Uh, just following up on your point about the Blankenships, remember, he's got a brother. Josh has a brother, Caleb who plays on this Tulsa team, who's a tight end, who had to deal with that controversy last season. But I think Keith Burns had the right attitude about it. He said, you know, you do what's best for the team. He said, I learned that from Lou Holtz, and you always make decisions that are best for the team in the long run, and Tyler Gooch was best for the team in the long run. And I think in the long run, Bill, who is a tremendous high school coach, can probably understand right. those very words. Tough when you're the dad. Yep. Everybody understands that. You're in a difficult situation. Off the play action. There's Gooch on the run, throwing, put it up there, and it's caught. 48-yard line. Montez Colton went up, all six, one of them, to make the grab. Gain of 16. That's highlight reel. That was a highlight reel throw. You're talking about a quarterback who's on the move, who throws a dart between two receivers. That was a special play. There's Caleb Blankenship. The starting tight end for Tulsa. He's got real good hands, real intelligent player, as you would expect, right? Son of a coach, you're going to be an intelligent football player. DJ Barnett is the ball carrier. Again, we've been focusing on our showcase high school football game in the Pennsylvania area. Brian Mundy. Had a couple of touchdowns, three receptions. Woodland Hills all over Shaler, 26 to 6. Chris Morgan had a big game rushing, 123 yards on the ground. And each week, we will pick a super selected high school football game. And Shea with the highlights. Head for Indianapolis for high school football come next week. But you know, that Woodland Hills game you were talking about, that Ryan Mundy guy, you know, he's a pretty good defensive back, rated number two by Super Prep, which means he's going to be heavily recruited. You're paying attention to the high school kids. Absolutely. You got to in this game. Sports Center is coming up next. Next week, in our Friday game, the game we focus on, we mentioned the Indianapolis area. It'll be Ben Davis against Warren at Warren. And, uh, ben Davis is the defending state champion. We're expecting a crowd of some 8,000 people there next week. Pretty exciting, and again, high school fans all over the country, high school football players, get excited about your game being showcased on Friday Night College Football on ESPN. DJ Barnett, the carrier, and Teddy Lehman, the stop. You can't talk about high school football this season without mentioning the number one team in the country, De La Salle out of Concord, California, 125 wins in a row. Wow. That, I mean, that's that's incredible. You know, it gets back to the question I posed heading to break. What was your 40 time? <laughs> at, was at not, your best. It was not 4-3. 
four it five five. I was a good four five, a little bit under a four five guy. I could get to a four four plus sometimes. Now the shoes are a factor there. Was it on grass? Was it on a track? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of issues with the high school. You just take 40 the dash. One you right, exactly. <laughs> Bop at the punt, lands the one yard line and heads for the end zone and a touchback. And we're headed for a commercial. Seven and a half to play here in the fourth. Sooners up 24 to nothing. Steve Levy, Rod Gilmore, Alex Flanagan. Friday night football for you from Tulsa. If this score holds up, does Oklahoma hang on to the number three ranking in the nation? Good question. I think, I think they do. I think they do. Here's White, still in the football game and throwing and completing. That time to Lance Donnelly, his first catch of the game. Bring up a second down and short. More great college football for you. Come tomorrow, 5.30 Eastern on ESPN2. It's Tennessee, Wyoming. Clemson and Georgia will go at it. Prime time here on ESPN. And Wisconsin UNLV tomorrow night, the nightcap on ESPN2 for Tennessee. Casey Claus and a 37 touchdown passes through his first two seasons. Peyton Manning had 33, the comparison. But Clawson uh, might need some help tomorrow night. Uh, no Kelly Washington. Watch for that second and one before the snap, flags and whistles. Kelly Washington, probably one of the best receivers in college football. He says he's the best. I, there's some other pretty good ones out there, but he won't be playing in that opening game with a bad knee. Uh, but there are some great, get big, ball, tall receivers ball. in college football ball this start, year. Start. Up in. False start. Five yard penalty. Against Oklahoma, they'll push him back some five yards. What do you think about it? You know, they say now this season they have taken the uh, margin of victory out of the computer aspect. Yeah. Of course, the pollsters, those who still vote, will factor that in. Florida State only a, a seven point victory over Iowa State a week ago. You know, I still think you need to have some human element in the BCS formula. You know, have them get it down to two or three teams and have some committee involved helping you make a determination. I don't like leaving it to a computer solo. Here's White, still firing, incomplete. Donnelly took a big hit. Really hurts because didn't come up with the ball. Reginald Reese was yeah. there as well. Yeah, getting back to that BCS yep. thing. Oregon should have played in the national championship <laughs> game last year. I don't think there's any question about that. I think everybody would agree with that by now. And those who wouldn't admit it should admit it, okay? Uh, but you need to have that human element so you don't have those problems like you had last year or a couple of years ago, you know, with the whole Miami thing being left out. Oklahoma felt certainly that they would have been in contention for that national title except for that loss to Oklahoma State late last season. The game in which they had zero rushing yards. Ronaldo works on the receiving end. Yeah. Jason White's pass. And what Oklahoma has done, as you can see, they've decided they're going to work on their running game. You know, we talked about it at the beginning of the show. We've seen it during the show. Quentin Griffin, Kiwan Jones, Ronaldo works. You know, we've seen two backs in the backfield. We've seen two tight ends. They are committed to getting their running game together. You know, they haven't done the New Year's Day thing where they've blown off their resolution. They're stuck with it tonight. <laughs> Here's Ferguson to punt it away. Blake Ferguson taking over for his brother Jeff, who was the punt of the last four seasons. And let's see. Oklahoma says they've got it. Waiting for the official, and there it is. Antonio Perkins, who had the 91-yard punt return for the touchdown. Talk about your big special teams player. Well. Yeah, the coaches told us that all camp long, Perkins had a great camp, and they had to find a way to get him on the field more. He's a nickelback. They play him in the secondary. He does the punt returns. He's now on the kickoff coverage team. So anything they can do to get him out there, they're trying. Watch him. Paying attention. Get away from the ball. Right. Get away. That's your main hope. Made contact with the football, that leads to this. Oklahoma, first down to 10, chance for some more practice, right, Rod? Here's White, throwing, and knocked away. White was really pounded. Donnelly was the intended target. Josh Walker put a pretty good lick on White. And that's the balance. Do you risk getting your quarterback hurt while you try to get him more experience? Well, take a look at this right here. They're keeping him in the game to get the experience, and he's going to take a big shot here. You know, Josh Walker levels the big hit. It's a clean hit. 
Although I do agree with Bill Curry. You don't jump and flop on a guy, as Mike Golick says it's okay to do. <laughs> that was the way Golick played the game. Wouldn't expect him to say anything else. Inside the 20-yard line, Ronaldo works. Brought down by Brendan Swisher. I think Tulsa was very careful how they approached this game. I'm, I'm sure they didn't count on winning it, wanted to be competitive, and then focus on the rest of the schedule. Well, you remember what Keith Burns said to us. He said, hey, this is not the whole season for right. us. You know, we want to make a good showing. We're going to do the right thing. We want to win the football game, but I'm not going to shoot everything for this game. Thus, Michael Delaney is not playing. Probably could have played, but electing to keep him for the rest of the way. Ronaldo works the ball carrier. Tulsa last season beat Indiana State in their opener. Division I double-A team. They beat them 51 to nothing and went on to lose their next 10 games. And it looks like it'll be an 11-game losing streak. Be the third longest losing streak in the nation. Duke has lost 23 in a row. Houston has lost 15 in a row. And there is Delaney, who was the top tackler for this season, team a season ago, the former transfer exactly. from Oklahoma. You know he wanted to play badly in this ballgame. Coming up on five minutes to play, White takes a look and says, you know what, I want to think about it. There's only one second left on the play clock, I think, as well. And they'll take a timeout. 5.05 left in the fourth. 24 to nothing. The third-ranked Sooners in control. While we're new at Friday night football, Sports Center, old shoe. After the game coming up, Linda Cohn and Kevin Frazier play ball and Talk about the Patriots who are not getting any respect. Scored a big win over the, the Redskin team last night. The pass is completed to Mark Clayton. Who's, who's coaching those? Who's coaching those Redskins now? Anyway, <laughs> oh, the old ball coach, right? Ball coach, yep. You know, and he'd be proud of uh, old Bob Stoops right here. You know, you you put the points on. I think they both are of a like mind. It's not running up the score. It's that it's that art of war thing, you know, where you you do what you can and you let the message about how good you are go loud and far so everybody knows. Second down and nine. Works the ball. Carrier is he in? Touchdown! Oklahoma. And as Spurrier said in a recent Sunday conversation, he said, you know, you're not obnoxious, you're not arrogant when you're only scoring 14 points. People are critical of you and talk about when you run up the score when you're capable, when you have that kind of talent and skill, and clearly Stoops in Oklahoma can do that to you if they want. Well, you know, he says, we're good. We're good. We're out to do something special this season, and they're going to put it on you, and they expect you to come and give them their best. They don't take any excuses, make any of themselves. Here's Trey to Carlo. On to add the extra point. No good to Carlo. The freshman from Carrollton, Texas, missing on the extra point. Sure, that will spoil what has been an excellent night for him. And so the score is 30 to nothing. This was a 3 nothing game at halftime. And it's now 30 to nothing, four and a half to play. Let's go down to the field and Alex. Well, you guys, a lot of OU fans and people around the country have been waiting to see the debut of Kevin Wilson. He says that one of the things he's hoping that people will notice about his offensive line is that they are physical, they are tough, and they have attitude. He says that ever since he's arrived at OU, he's been coaching the O-line a mindset. He says that blocking is a choice, and he needs his offensive linemen to make that choice. He says he won't accept his guys not playing physical. That just isn't an option. Steve? Again, he comes over, Alex, from Northwestern, as you point out. They were the number 15, Northwestern was, the number 15 offense in the nation last season, averaging 443 yards per game, and they had a 4-7 and seven record. Yeah. It tells you how good his offense was. Yeah, he knows what he's doing, but, but don't get me wrong. That offensive line they had last year wasn't bad. They right. were just young. I mean, they had a bunch of injuries. They played freshmen and redshirt freshmen and all of that. It takes a while to mature and become good, and I think, you know, Kevin Wilson is a great addition, but, hey, if Mangino hadn't gone to KU, he'd still be here running this team. I think the other question is, as DiCarlo gets set to kick it away, you know, they put on the big yardage tonight, the big points, 454 yards of total offense for Oklahoma. Sherman Steptoe returning that. And we might just see Nate Hibble coming in. That quarterback for Oklahoma. 
at the very next opportunity. What will people take away from this great Oklahoma explosion second half? There always will be that little asterisk, hey, that was Tulsa. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to make that much of an impression on outsiders. I, I think they're going to say, hey, they struggled in the first half, they didn't look good, they dropped the ball, they threw it poorly at times, and oh, they wore them down in the second half. But I think internally their coaches will feel like they did some good things in the running game. 328 yards rushing again tonight. That of their 454 yards total. Garrett Mills on the receiving end of that pass from Tyler Gooch. For Tulsa, their big home game here, and then they go on the road. They'll play three straight road games at Arkansas State, Louisiana Tech, and Baylor before they return home for a pretty big date with Kansas here on September the 28th. Montese Colton trying to make something happen. He's pushed out at the 41-yard line by Michael Hawkins. You know, Steve, I think the one thing that will really disappoint the Oklahoma coaching staff about the offense, they didn't hit any deep balls. You know, they wanted to throw deep, get some home runs. Uh, they took one shot at it, didn't have any success, and then they didn't go deep again. They had a couple intermediate things, but they didn't go deep again. I think that will disappoint them a little bit. First down and 10. They have made us nothing but feel welcome here in Tulsa for the premier edition of Friday Night Football on ESPN. Gooch, a little pump, and he's out of bounds. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Garen Allen forced him out. So how do you like the Oklahoma defense from what you've seen tonight? You know, I think it's, I think it's been good, but I, I think it's, it goes back to the asterisk we talked about. This is a Tulsa offense right. going at them. I think we'll learn more about their defense come next week against Alabama, although we don't know how good the Crimson Tide offense will be this year. Uh, we know that Coach Fran coaches his guys up. He gets them ready, so you can be sure they'll, they'll have a lot of different formations and things for Oklahoma to see. 340 left here in the fourth quarter. Here's Gooch still on the move. Loses the football that time while he was hit at the 40-yard line. And Oklahoma has it, and it really, all of, for the first time tonight, it sounds like truly a Sooner home game. Yeah, it really does. And Tyler Gooch is, is not happy about this. I mean, one thing he wanted to do was stay in the pocket more, and he's gone out of the pocket a number of times tonight. Part of that was forced. You know, Jimmy Wilkerson forced him out, makes a hit, and then there's a fumble. But he's going to get better at staying in the pocket. It just couldn't happen tonight. The numbers on Gooch. You wonder about the pass protection again against a very good defense. He's not going to see the kind of pass rushing he saw tonight, probably the rest of the season. And as you point out, the mobility, getting out of the pocket, trying to make something happen. Nate Hibble checks into the football game. Of course, the starter, he started all 11 wins for Oklahoma a season ago. Lost out of the preseason quarterback battle and finds himself backing up Jason White. Jared Estes is the ball carrier. White is done for the night, you would think. Well, I think he is, and it was sort of uh, a mixed review for him tonight. He did some good things. He had re receivers not help him a lot, but he threw a couple of balls that he probably should not have thrown. Made a couple of bad decisions, but all in all, you know, pretty average night, I guess. Here's Hibble, to attempt his first pass. He was belted as he released and then really overthrew his target. Sam Rayburn put the hit on Hibble. And there are the numbers on the Jason White. As you point out, you would have know, three, four, maybe more completions. Oh, yeah. If his receivers made a play for him. A couple of drops on him. For Hibble, I understand he has handled uh, the loss of the job or being the backup with tremendous maturity. They say he's had the best camp he ever had, and yet it still was not good enough to knock out Jason White. Hibble throwing on the money down to the 30-yard line, Antoine Savage. Well, he knows from last season that he's one play away from being the guy. And he got hurt last year, and then Jason White got hurt. So he knows he has to stay in there and be prepared and ready to go. The difference is he doesn't threaten a defense as much as Jason White does. More does, of a pure passer. Yeah, he's a pocket guy. He doesn't threaten you on the edge. He doesn't get the ball down the field as well. But he can be a good quarterback. Last year, Hibble tore up Tulsa 347 yards. Estes getting an opportunity. C.J. Scott burned down in Oklahoma. The staff 
getting everybody into the game now, getting everybody touches, works, has had some opportunities. Estes now having some chances to carry the football as we approach two and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Attendance, 40,385. It is a capacity crowd at Skelly Stadium. The largest crowd they ever had here was better than 47,000 fans in 87. When, yes, the Sooners came calling again. That year they added some extra stands and some seats to bump up the capacity. Estes, the ball carrier. Well, you know, right now, all the Oklahoma guys, you see the offensive line, you know, white jerseys clean. Nice big crowd. These Oklahoma fans not only took over the stadium, they took over the streets with parties and the like. It was a pretty wild scene rolling up here. And you're right. I'm yeah. looking for a grass team. Well, they won't get a grass team, but they're, they're you know, this is that. Oh, that's right. Artificial turf. turf but, but they're not sweaty, you know? Up the middle, making it look easy. Gerard Estes, the junior from Wichita Falls, finds the end zone. Make it 36 to nothing. <laughs> DiCarlo will come on. Again, you remember he missed his last extra point. So that thought just might be going through his mind. This one is true. 37 to nothing with a minute 46 to play. 34 to nothing in this second half. Well, this game, while not necessarily competitive, had the number three team of the nation on the air. And a look at some of the places and games we'll be bringing you at upcoming Friday night football. Get to see uh, Byron Leftwich and Marshall on the 20th of September. And UCF, they can play some football, too. They'll be throwing it around the park yeah. that night on ESPN, too. Yeah, that game's going to be very exciting. A lot of balls in the air that night. Hey, we get to see Fresno State a couple of times. And that last game, Cincinnati, East Carolina, is going to be a big game in Conference USA. Going to be fun to watch that one as well. If we could uh, just uh, flip anything with the schedule, if we could get Fresno State maybe to play in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. We work on that one? <laughs> I'd, I'd like that. We've got some time. It's <laughs> late in the season. Maybe we can work on that. But it'll be jacked in Fresno. We look forward to uh, bringing you college football just about every Friday night. Something new, something different, something all the folks at ESPN are truly excited about. And uh, nobody more excited to bring you Friday night football than Rod and Alex and myself and our fine Friday night football crew that has been assembled on ESPN and ESPN2. 37 to nothing. The only thing in doubt, the final score. Here's Steptoe from the two-yard line. He's out ahead of the 22 or so, where he has wrestled down. There is a flag down. They'll sort it out. Again, last year when these two met in Norman, it was 58 to nothing. I, I think that's how Tulsa will measure themselves. So they've cut 20, 21 points off uh, the deficit from a year ago. They'll be concerned about their offense. Well, I think the other thing Tulsa takes away from this is that they played hard. And there's no question about the spirit and the enthusiasm their players had. Let's face it, they don't have the same kind of players at Tulsa that Oklahoma has. Oklahoma has so many high school and JCL Americans that have gone to that program. You know, the talent level, there is a difference. But these guys at Tulsa played their hearts out tonight, particularly in that first half. 3 nothing game in the first half, and I'm sure that's what Coach Burns will try to tell him. And, it, and he'll say, look, we just faced the best team we're going to face all season, maybe the best team in the country. And for at least a half, we hung in there. Sports Center is coming up next. Linda and Kevin are standing by. Put up in the air. Rombie Bryant could not come up with the grab from Tyler Gooch. And Gooch is still in there fighting. Oh, well, you knew that. <laughs> no doubt. No, we spent some time with him yesterday. And, uh... He is a battler. There's no question about it. He gives you that look. You know he's ready to go compete. We mentioned earlier he was uh, a little bummed that uh, Keith Burns made everybody go to class today. Everybody had to go to class and then come to the campus for the uh, football facilities and take care of all those things. And he said, hey, it's just like high school. Yep. High school, you know, go to class and you play a Friday night game. I think there was 
get your girlfriend, have a cheeseburger at lunch, and then play the game <laughs> in between. Parrish, the ball carrier. Hilaire, the stop, and we check in with Alex. Well, Steve, I want you guys to take notice of uh, Ken Burns, Keith Burns' demeanor down on the sidelines. And remember one of the things he told us yesterday was that no matter what happened, his goal was to maintain a high level of enthusiasm on the sidelines. And he's doing that. He said he knew that his players would be looking at him, and he said he just wanted to let them know that you can't quit no matter whether you win or you lose. And after tonight's loss, he'll be going home to his family, his three sons and his wife, who he says are the most important things in his life, and looking to them for support to get him through the rest of the season. Normally his kids, Casey and Tanner, are actually on the field with him. His youngest is Davis, not yet ready to hit the uh, artificial turf that they have here at Skelly Stadium. Moffitt is on. I think Burns can be proud. I, I, don't, I have not sensed any quit in the Tulsa program here tonight. I think uh, just the, the difference in talent has become obvious here in the second half. Yeah, well, I think he's the right guy. I, mean, I think he's coaching him up the right way. I think they're... They're a physical team. They played hard. I think they've got the right attitude. I think it'll be a much better season for the Hurricane. Ball out of bounds. And those of you out there that were concerned, we would call them the Hurricanes. We have yet to make that mistake and could not because <laughs> my Stanford partner here made sure to point out, hey, it's Cardinal, not Cardinal. So we weren't going to get fooled there. Hey, on the line still here for Oklahoma, and this is significant. There it is, spelled out for you. Hurricane, there is no S on the end. Oklahoma is trying for their first road shutout since 1988. They beat North Carolina 28 to nothing on September the 10th. 37 to nothing here. Oklahoma oh, go home to Norman to take on Alabama next week. Ronaldo works the ball carrier out to the 43. Keith and McCory made the stop. Sports Center coming up next. There are a lot of good coaches in college football, but right now he's the king of them all. He's already got one national title. He may have the goods to get another one this year and was in the hunt last year. He's paid well and deservedly so. He's he's the guy. He is the top dog right now. What I was surprised about, and people probably forget, prior to his arrival, Stoops in the 99 season, Oklahoma had gone five years without having a winning record. His works, carries, likely the final play of the game. And think about it. You always think about Oklahoma being good every year. They had five off seasons in a row. And Stoops has come over, won him a national championship, and maybe another one come the end of this season. Could be, could be, but I'm looking forward to some more Friday nights with you, pal. We're going to have some great games and some more high school football to go along with that. Looking forward to that. The action Friday night is numbers. They're just countless friends from the Tulsa area get together at midfield. Teammates in high school, opponents in high school, families that are very close, and now they are once again close on the field. Not close on the scoreboard, however, tonight. A 3-0 game at halftime. The final is third-ranked Oklahoma over Tulsa, 37 to nothing. For Rod Gilmore and Alex Flanagan and our outstanding crew, this is Steve Lee. Thanks for watching Friday Night Football.